All right, guys, welcome to another stream. Uh, today, we're going to be playing some NES games on the Mr. FPGA. Uh, I've had a Mr. for uh, close to a year and a half now, and uh, you know, you guys have seen me use it a lot on the channel. I haven't used it as much recently, though, because I've just been doing a lot of other stuff on original hardware, but. Um, the Mister is a really great little device. Uh, it basically replicates uh, various devices, including consoles, computers, and arcade hardware uh, via an FPGA. And um, so it's like a little little emulator box. You can look at it at something like that, but it does everything through hardware as opposed to you know uh, you know running an emulator through uh, through software on a computer. Uh, so you end up getting a really sharp picture. You get uh, pretty much no input lag for the most part. It's extremely, extremely responsive. It does both HDMI, uh, sorry, digital and analog video out at the same time. So I can actually run it into an HDMI monitor for capture, uh, as well as a CRT at the same time for a more, you know, genuine experience. Um, it's got all sorts of ports on it, depending on the, the add-on hardware you get for it. So you can use a wide variety of controllers, and there's controller adapters, so you can use uh, original console controller hardware on on it, like an actual NES controller or an actual Super Nintendo controller. Um, and there's just so many awesome features to this thing. Um, and uh, because it is uh, kind of an enclosed, all-in-one device, uh, you can quickly just, uh, you know, bounce around from core to core, or console to console, or console to computer, and it's just very snappy and uh, just very awesome. So, um, what we're gonna do is actually just do kind of a variety stream here of NES games, um, because, you know, YouTube uh, doesn't want to grow my channel without me streaming seemingly every day. So, I've got nothing going on today, I figured I'd go ahead and stream, try to boost that watch time a little bit. Uh, but also have some fun just playing some NES games, because I love the NES. Uh, as you guys know, um, I do a lot of playthroughs of NES games on my channel. I, I love everything. I've got dozens of consoles in my own collection, but NES just works so well for my channel because it doesn't take that long to learn the games, it doesn't take that long to play through the games, and they're just fast and snappy, and it's just a good time for me. And it's also a console, I, it was like my first personal personal console like I had a my parents had an Atari 2600 when I was born I, I I loved that but and I played it but the NES was like my first real console like it was mine and uh, so I lived off that thing for a long long time and I still go back to it all the time as you guys know here so but um I may or may not take requests over the course of the stream we'll see um, but I am gonna start off with Silver Surfer I figured that would be a really good game to like test the audio levels and things like that and uh, it's also a personal favorite of mine on the console. I always go back to it multiple times a year. Now, we might not beat the game because the, the last few levels in this game always give me trouble because I don't have them memorized 100%. But, uh, you know, we'll just kind of see what happens here and, uh, yeah, see how far we get. We'll just bounce from game to game and just try a bunch of different things. And, uh, and yeah, so uh, just give me a couple seconds. I see uh, Flynn is out there. Nihilus, welcome back. In Soviet Russia, stream catches you. Uh, guns, Aust Gun says, Austin's never say die November. <laughs> and Carl, what's going on, Carl? Welcome back. Uh, two nights in a row, or two afternoons in a row. Well, night. I, well, it's not quite night just yet. Uh, it's uh, about 3.41 as I'm doing this stream right now. Uh, but as far as my controller is concerned, I'm actually using the 8-bit Doe uh, SN30 Pro. It's a SNES-style controller, uh, and I have the wired version of it. And uh, I actually picked this up a couple weeks ago, and it's an excellent, excellent controller. Highly recommended if you need a controller for, you know, all your emulation needs, or you need a controller for something like the Mister. Uh, definitely check this thing out. It's got analog sticks as well if you want to try like analog based games And you can also use it with modern games as well since it's got the two analog sticks on it It's a it's a very nice controller it's super great for for retro games um, Let's go ahead and hit the uh, B button apparently All right, so silver surfer uh, Doesn't really matter where I start. Uh, I would probably recommend starting with this guy or this guy uh, the other three are a little more difficult to start with, um, but we'll go, we'll go with him. Hey Lawrence, welcome back. Yeah, I'm glad you caught the stream as well. <laughs> so we're gonna play some Silver Surfer. So, pretty straightforward game, you just press, uh, B to attack. 
Uh, is it B to attack? I need to actually see what my uh, controls are. You can press select to uh, use a bomb. Uh, now it was the only bomb I had. Oops. Actually, you know what? Let's, uh, let me make sure I've got my, my control set up properly. So, right, left, down, up, A, B, select, start, and, uh, I gotta, I gotta bust up my mini keyboard for the mister. Totally forgot that. If I have a little keyboard, I can wire up into the mister. And let's go ahead and do, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. So, all right. Yeah, so to bring up the menu in the mister, you do need to, uh, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and, and uh, well, I'm not gonna reset. We'll be fine. We'll get some extra lives over the course of the game. Just wanted to make sure my controls are right. So yeah, it's the A button that fires. I thought it was the A button that fires. And I was like, but it wasn't mapping up to my 8-bit Doe controller correctly. I was like, am I pressing A or am I actually pressing B? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. So the Fs here, they actually give you uh, firepower upgrades. They make your shot more powerful, basically. And, uh... Yeah, so it's very certain enemies give you... Uh, very specific enemies give you, you know, weapon upgrades and things like that. It's really good to know which ones do. That way you can just kind of focus on them. This guy's probably going to give me a, an orb. Nope. I'm actually getting ahead of myself. One of these guys is going to give me an orb. There we go. Or a little pod or an option, whatever you want to call it. And you can press the B button to cycle it around, so you can shoot to the side, and you can shoot backwards. Silver Surfer is very much a uh, memorization-heavy game. It's also, you know, what we like to call uh, a thinking man shmup. Uh, this is what we would we would call games like R-Type, where... Ooh, that was close. Where it's not necessarily about killing everything, so much as it is, it is just making, like, smart decisions as you play. So, learning the uh, the level layouts is extremely important, but also being very selective about what you attack, especially when you're not powered up, and when you die and you start over, you know, this game is checkpoint based, and when you die you go back to checkpoints. You need to be selective about what you shoot, and what you avoid, and, and whatnot, if you want to survive and get back up to being in a powered up state. Hey Carl, and hey Konga, welcome back folks. Hope you're doing alright today. Hope you're ready for some NES. Good old-fashioned NES. Well, not on an actual NES, but, you know. <laughs> Just some good old NES games, that's what I'll say. Now, a lot of these, uh, you know, enemies also shoot projectiles. You also kind of have to know, you know, the, the sort of fire rates they have. That way you don't get right in their face when uh, you don't really need to. See, like right here, I'm just choosing not to uh, to go down or to go up, and I can also use my little options to uh, you know kill enemies slightly below me without risking you know running into them with my surfboard. I am Silver Surfer, so I am on a surfboard, I guess. Hey, Greg, welcome back. Yeah, I've always enjoyed this game. I, I did actually grow up with this. Uh, one of my best friends owned this. And so I was able to play this a lot growing up. And then when I started collecting NES games, you know, in, say, the mid-90s or so, uh, it was definitely one of the earlier games I got for myself. And it's one I've constantly played on and off over the years. Um, I've always loved the soundtrack in the game. And, you know... Soundtracks like this in particular would later influence my own personal musical tastes in things like breakbeats from the, uh, the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, this soundtrack still holds up so well uh, in that regard. It's just amazing stuff. Alright, so those silver S's, those are extra lives. So I just got myself an extra life. And I also have one bomb on hand. You can carry multiple bombs. It's the uh, the B next to uh, Silver Surfer's portrait on the uh, the bottom left. Yeah, really challenging game, but uh, it's more of a memorizer and a thinker than it is just like you know mash 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 mash. Uh, less about like super fast fast reflexes and more about thinking about what you're actually doing. 
Nihilus says, so for NES, do I prefer my Mister or my AVS? Uh, well, for visual quality, the Mister definitely beats the AVS. Um, I think they also incorporated save states, which is, which is quite nice. Um, but the AVS, it just makes my life a lot easier. Uh, I like the interface, it's nice and simple. I, I like, uh, that I can use my own flash cart on it, so I've got all my save states already on my power pack. Uh, I also find the save state functionality to be easier on the power pack. Um, but yeah, generally I prefer playing on the AVS. Uh, when it comes to just NES stuff, because then I can use my actual NES controller without having to use some kind of converter. Um, and it's just, it's something I've been using for five years now, so it's just like I have a major soft spot for the AVS. But the Mister does 1080p, uh, whereas the AVS only goes up to 720, which is unfortunate. Um, so, you know, uh, NES on the Mister does look better than it does on the AVS, but... But I, I still love using my AVS. It's I, and I can use my actual cartridges on the AVS. I've actually I don't think I've told many of you guys. I've, I've posted some of these on my Discord, but I've actually started collecting NES carts again. And I'm nearing the 200 mark right now of cartridges. Uh, so you know something like the AVS is nice because I can actually use those cartridges, and I've, I've actually done that quite a bit. I've I've done some Twitch streams where. I just bust out like a, a you know a couple dozen cartridges and just try like random games I haven't really messed around with before. So it's been fun, Mister. You can't really do that because it's all you know, it's all on internal storage. It's all ROMs and whatnot, like a uh, emulator. So yeah, they both have their ups and downs. The big the big draw to the Mister isn't really playing one specific console. The Mister's major appeal is being able to play a ton of different consoles. Uh, in one tiny little box, but then have the accuracy um, of, you know, the accuracy being closer to real hardware with its, its very low uh, input latency and so on and so forth. The constant improvements of the cores, you know, core updates are constantly being uh, released, you know, to fix bugs and, and glitches and uh, and just tighten things up even even further, so it's, it's good stuff. Yeah, whenever you guys see me do a Let's Play, though, on, uh, you know, my channel, it's it's on original hardware. I don't do Let's Plays on the Mister or or via software emulation unless it's, like, the only way I can actually do it. Like, like I, I'd have to use the Mister for something like the Atari Lynx because I don't have a modded console and I don't really intend on doing uh, something like that anytime soon because it's expensive. Very expensive, actually, to do that. And then again, you know, uh, on the AVS, I can I can use my original NES control pad without having to use any converters or adapters, which is nice. Hey, Ego, welcome back. And I agree, Greg. Yeah, this is this is great NES music for sure. One hundred percent. All right, mini boss, and then we get to go to the next level. So a lot of levels in this game have, you know, these basic little bosses. I just call them mini bosses. And then the final stage of each level has like the real boss, the big boss, which is generally a little more difficult. Jumping back in the retro collecting. Why would you punish yourself like that? <laughs> yeah. Um. That's a good question, Carl. I mean, it started off with me just downsizing. I had a bunch of stuff I just did not want to play. You know, like Xbox 360, PS3, PS2, Wii, stuff like that. And I started making big trade-ins to one of my local game stores. And I was like, well, what am I going to do with this money? I don't really want to buy anything. So I just, out of nowhere, I started buying NES carts with that money. And then that got me to, like, my first, like, you know, 80 or 90 carts, believe it or not. And, um, and then it's just kind of grown bit by bit from there. I'm not trying to go for, like, a full set or anything, but, you know, I do want, like, you know, all of the Mega Mans, and, which I actually, I just, I just did that. Uh, wanted all the Mega Mans, all the Castlevanias, Ninja Gaidens, you know, stuff like that. Contras, most of the Konami games, um, you know. 
And then, you know, as I've seen, like, cheap games as well, like, even bottom-of-the-barrel games, like, they would still be fun to mess around with. Like, I've been picking them up, too, and experimenting with uh, more random titles, and it's just been fun. All right. So that one red thing, I didn't want to shoot it because it was going to fly around in circles. If I'm thinking of the right one, I think I am. Yeah, we're close to the boss fight right now, so... Big old turtle boss. So even though I lost a life early on, we're still back up to six lives. This is one of those games where, like, by the time you get to the end of the game, if you've played well, you'll have, like, nine lives, if not more. Super stationary boss. Yeah, Carl, the thing about NES games is that I've had multiple decent-sized NES collections, like two to three hundred plus cartridges at multiple, you know, periods of time in my life. And every time I've sold them, it's not because I wanted to, it's because, like, I... you know, couldn't make ends meet. I had to, you know, get rid of something to make things work out. And so... You know, I was like, well, I'm in a position to where I can I can get these cards again, or some of them. Some of them are just stupid expensive, and, you know, I'll end up never getting them. But, um, you know, I was like, yeah, I've got all this trade credit. I can, I can go ahead and just, like, start building a, a small collection. A modest collection, but that modest collection quickly turned into something that <laughs> is a, a little bit bigger than that, so... And I hope to intend on, you know, continuing to let it grow further and further. We'll see. But yeah, there's there's just a lot of stuff I had built up over the years. Like, I get PS2 games I meant to stream and I never got around to. I was like, well, I've had this game for five years now. I still haven't played it once. And I don't feel like playing it anytime soon with all the other stuff on my plate. And uh, so, yeah, I just started grabbing stuff left and right. I had, like, excess hardware and things like that. Like, controllers, like... I didn't really need. It's like, do I need seven PlayStation 2 controllers? It's like, no, probably not. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of things like that I ended up parting with and just got, you know, I got, I probably got close to like a thousand dollars in trade credit over the last like six months. You know, I would basically pare down one week and then two weeks later I'd go back and I'd do it again. And then two weeks after that I'd do it again. Um, and before I do it, I had like cleaned out a lot of like just the random junk that I felt like I didn't really need. As well as duplicates of games that I definitely did not need. Like, I did not need, you know, a copy of Doom on every platform. Um, <laughs> especially with flashcards and things like that, so... Yeah, it was nice to sort of declutter. Uh, to, you know, downsize on stuff that I knew I just was never going to play. And, uh, you know, kind of put it towards something that I just kind of enjoy more on a personal level. Even if I'm not going to really, like, play them much. Uh, I just like having them. Um, that's that's NES cartridges for me. Like, I've always loved the NES cards. You know, I grew up with them, as I mentioned at the beginning of the, of the stream, but I also like, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're just a very unique card design, and they're, like, really cool to have on my shelf. You know, they got unique designs, and, you know, they sit really nicely vertically when they're, like, in their uh, little dust sleeves. I've been trying to get dust sleeves for as many as I can. Um, so, yeah, it's just something I've always enjoyed, you know, and like I said, I've had a, uh, have decent sized card collections for NES multiple times over the years and just had to sell them for reasons. So, hopefully this time I can, I can build that collection and just keep it. Good for some Power Stone? Well, I mean, having seven controllers is nice, but you'd also need seven friends, <laughs> which I most certainly do not have. So, I, I don't, I rarely ever have people over to play video games. Rarely. Truly rare. And, if, and when people do come over, it's usually like Ronnie and my brother. And you guys have seen Ronnie on stream a bunch of times, even with my brother. So, um, and I have a couple of other gamer friends, but like, we don't really play games together, which is the weird thing. I think it's because we're all, we're just like old now. And it's not like we're in our early 20s anymore, where what we would do is get together and just play video games. Also, I found that with some of my friends, their their drive to play to like actually play games has, has dropped a lot. Um, 
So it's like, even though I would love to play games with them, you know, they're not really in the mood for it. Uh, I guess they're too old and too cool for it now. But, uh... Yeah, so for me, I, I've always, like, had stashes of controllers because I always worry that, like, a controller's gonna die on me and I'm gonna have to go buy another- Oh, are you kidding me? I'm gonna have to look at the replay of that later. I don't feel like I actually touched that. I feel like I got screwed by a big hitbox. Um... Yeah, even if, like, I wanted to play some, like, really cool multiplayer game, you know, like Power Stone 2 in four-player mode, uh, I really wouldn't be able to, because I, I just don't have the people to do it with, so... Oh, there. Alright, let's try this again. Okay, we got it that time. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, this is a checkpoint-based game, so... And you're, you're very underpowered when you respawn in this game. And so what I always tell people when I play, or when they're trying to play this, is, um, you know, don't be afraid to use your bomb. Like, you get one bomb every time you die, so you should really use it. Absolutely use it. Now, it's not hard to get powered up again. Like, you can see I'm already at uh, level 3 in my firepower. The, your firepower level is denoted by those orbs in the bottom of the screen. So you can see there's 3 out of 5. Ooh, that was close. And we've already gotten multiple F power-ups. And again, if I get worried here, I can always use a bomb. You have to hit, you have to reach over and hit select to use your bomb, which kind of sucks, but... I mean, it's an NES controller, so it's... <laughs> it's not like it's got four main face buttons right next to each other, like on a Super Nintendo. Although, being on the Mister, I could actually map start and select to, uh, you know, the, uh, the A and, uh, X buttons on this, uh, 8 Doe controller. Yeah, and I'm using an SNES-style 8 Doe controller, so I could actually move the start and select next to my main buttons and have, like, a four-button face layout like a Super Nintendo controller, and that would make games like this, I think, a little bit easier to play. It's another benefit to something like the Mister. You can fully reconfigure your controls on any core, so, you can actually make some really awesome quality of life improvements. One thing I love doing on, say, like, the Master System core, is mapping the Master System pause to, like, the start button on whatever controller I'm using. It makes Master System so much more enjoyable to use. It's another reason why I really loved the Mega SG. Uh, by Analog. I had one of those, and that was one of those things. I, I actually sold that to fund my Mister a year and a half ago, along with my Super NT. Basically sold those off and bought the Mister in full, fully decked out. Logos says, I always use Rapid Fire when I play Silver Server to compensate for the Bullet Sponge Syndrome. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a strategy, that's fair. Uh, I don't do that because I think a little bit differently when I play the game. I don't think, oh man, I have to mash so hard. Um, and you really don't, because you can only attack so fast in this game. So what I do is I time my shots. I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not like constantly mashing in between, because that doesn't do any good. It does you literally zero good, it just wears out your hand. Uh, but also, like I said, uh, when I first started playing this, I am very selective about what I attack. There are a lot of enemies in this game you can just avoid. All you need to kill are the enemies that get you powered up in a lot of situations. Um, there are a lot of enemies in this game that are literally just like turrets, and all they do is straight, shoot straight forward, so just sit above them or below them. And you don't even have to shoot, you know. It gives your hand a, uh, a rest. So, you know, especially when you die and you're, you're trying to recover. But yeah, a lot of people do use turbo controllers on this game, in particular, because they do feel like they have to mash all the time. Um, but yeah. The bullet sponge syndrome is kind of like dependent on the area and, and how you decide to tackle, you know, various areas of the game. Look at that. Did that actually give me an extra life? I don't think it did, because I, I was at 8 when I picked it up. Unless 8 is the maximum, I'm pretty sure it goes up to 9. Hey Aberdeen, welcome back. Yeah, live streams two days in a row, right? 
Let's go. Yeah, I figured uh, maybe an NES stream would do a little bit better than my Doom stream last night. Like, we barely had anybody watching, which was kind of interesting. Doom on a Friday night, and we didn't really have many people. Uh, I ended up stopping the stream... Uh, not early, like, we were close to the five-hour mark, but I would have kept going if we had more people and it was, uh, it was busier. But I was just kind of, like, sitting there, kind of, like, by myself for the most part, just not really, uh, having many people to chat with, so... I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm gonna go try to go to sleep or something. I ended up uh, just kind of chilling out on the PC for like the next two hours afterwards. Going through random old YouTube videos and looking at like stats and stuff like that and... and whatever. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really have anything going on today. All I was gonna do was just like organize things in my apartment. And I figured, you know what, let me, uh, let me do another stream. And, uh, I'll just organize stuff, like, when I'm done streaming here. <laughs> hey, Mike! Wait, what are you talking about, Mike? Are you talking about the Mr. FPGA? Switching the profile for a BGA network st or rework station would be hell. What do you mean uh, by BGA rework station? I don't know what you mean by that. And hey, John Smith, welcome back. Yeah, choose your fights wisely, young Padawan. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what this game is, in a nutshell, is like... Like I said, it's what we would call a thinking man's shoot-em-up. Uh, it's more similar to something like R-Type than really anything else, in terms of, you know, enemy layouts, and, you know, how you have to be selective about what you attack, how you recover from checkpoints... Like that eyeball right there, if I wasn't powered up, I could have just skipped it completely. Although I actually wouldn't have been good to, because I would have wanted that power up. But also, you know, knowing what enemies drop what, uh, is also extremely important in this game. You were just looking at the picture. Hey, society! Yeah, I mean, Mike, I don't I don't know what your station is, so you'd have to, like, explain that to me, but you buy the Mr. to play games, you don't really buy it for anything else. <laughs> um, you know, it's not like you're gonna, it's not like an Arduino or something, or, like, you know, a Raspberry Pi, where maybe you'll use it as, like, a networking device. And I mean, I guess technically people probably could do things like that, but that's not why you get a Mr. It's really meant for, like, replication of platforms, be it consoles or computers that's that's the sole purpose of it really I mean that's basically what FPGAs are for um, well not necessarily not entirely what they're for but you know that's what we use them for in the uh, the retro gaming community <laughs> the retro gaming scene ball grid array it's a type of chip okay they usually need a special machine to solder them into the boards you can't see the solder joints once they're okay gotcha so something uh, to keep in mind is the Mister. It, it's actually based off Intel's DE10 Nano board. Um, so you basically buy the DE10 Nano, uh, and then you just attach other peripherals or boards to that to expand it into, say, like a fully decked out Mister. Like I have three boards to mine. Um, so there's the DE10 Nano, and then I think there's. Uh, Oh, I don't remember. See, I'm not really as uh, good with like talking about the Mister stuff, like just off the top of my head. But I believe I have the uh, an analog, uh, digital slash analog board, which gives me you know all my video outputs and things like that. And then I have a, um, I think I have the blister board. It's basically a USB hub uh, underneath it, but it also supports uh, snack adapters. Um, and uh, so I can use actual converters to use, you know, it's basically USB to NES or USB to SNES or so on and so forth. I have a bunch of controller adapters that I ironically don't even use because I've just found it's easier just to use standard USB controllers like the PS1 Classic or the Retrobit Saturn USB controller or uh, right now I'm using the 8-bit Doe SN30 Pro, which is just uh, awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Feels really good. Um, 
So, yeah, even though I've got my snack adapters, I don't actually use them. Um, I just prefer using these uh, more simplistic USB options. And there's uh, all, all sorts of other add-ons, too, that you can get. There's, uh, you know, my my video board supports the, uh, you know, both HDMI and analog video out. So I have a, uh, basically, VGA to uh, component adapter, which allows me to run uh, my game consoles out through analog via component. And then I just run that into one of my component CRTs. And, you know, playing NES and component on, like, a Sony flat screen CRT is just... It looks amazing. <laughs> it looks really, really good. Nice thick scan lines, and, uh, you know, none of the blurriness you get with uh, composite. Hey, Office, welcome back. Uh, Society, was this done by David Wise? No, this was done by Tim Fallen. And I think the other Fallen. I always forget his name. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny, uh, one of the, uh, the original programmers of this game uh, actually posted on Twitter about this, and it just popped up in my feed. I think maybe from, maybe someone else retweeted it or something. And he had mentioned it was, oops, see, that was my fault. I, I moved up too far too fast, which was a bad idea. But he had actually mentioned two Fallens, Tim and uh, there was one other one. Apparently they both worked on the soundtrack. <laughs> well, Aberdeen, I was making this game fly. <laughs> See, right there, I could have used my bomb if I got desperate, but thankfully I was able to get through those those blue things without uh, having to use it. Might use my bomb right here, though. Yeah. That would have been hard to get past that without using my bomb. But again, that's why I said, you know, use your bombs. You know, they're in the game for a reason. And I can just go ahead and just try to skip these guys. Again, be selective about what you attack. You don't have to kill everything in this game. It definitely helps, <laughs> trust me. But you don't have to kill everything. You just need to survive. There's no time limit. Yeah, not really in a good position right now, unfortunately. I've got a safe spot up top. Yeah, I'm super weak right now. Take my time, but we got it. Oh, Mike says, okay, he, you know that what it's for. It's just when you when you see electronics, your brain immediately goes into how you would go about repairing it if it broke. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I know absolutely nothing about, you know, working on modern electronics. Um, you know, I understand how working on electronics from, like, the 80s and 90s works, but everything has become so, uh, uh, so tiny now that, like, I can't even imagine, like, trying to replace, um, something. Ooh, you can actually fit through that. Very interesting. Oof, that was my fault. I got way too close. Not powerful enough to be that close. You see four dip switches on the board. You wonder what they do. I don't even know what the dip switches do, honestly. Uh, it's not something I ever looked into. I actually had someone uh, assemble my mister for me. 
Uh, so I'm not sure if the dip switches are even necessary, but I would assume they do something. Probably a safe assumption. A little bit farther back this time. And again, I've got a bomb on hand. I can use one if I want. These hands are always so random. Oh, see. Kapala, you really gonna do this? I don't know what you mean by that. Am I really gonna play Silver Surfer? I mean, I love this game. So, yes? <laughs> no? Maybe? Yeah. Don't- I- oops! <laughs> that was my fault again. I don't quite follow, though. I guess that's my answer. So, working on modern electronics requires a good set of ceramic tweezers. Uh, and flux. Lots of flux. You mean finish this game? I don't know why you're laughing so hard. This is not like an impossible game or anything. I don't- I don't- I still don't get it. Have you ever actually tried to beat this game? I also have multiple playthroughs of this on my channel, both in live streams and the Let's Play format. So again, I don't get it. I don't- I don't understand what you're laughing about. <laughs> I mean, if you go to bed at night, like, cowering in fear at the thought of even playing Silver Surfer, then I guess that's your prerogative, but... I mean, I like the game, and I don't, I don't fear it. It's just a fun game to me, with a great soundtrack. Recovering can be a bitch, though. It really can. I love it when people are like, "Oh my God, you're playing this game," and I'm like, "Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm playing this game. What's the problem?" <laughs> It's impossible! And then I just run through it without any problems. <laughs> it's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> this game is brutal, in your opinion. Well, I mean, it is. Um, it, it can be very brutal. Like, starting on this fight right here without any upgrades is actually quite challenging. You're actually better off not attacking those guys. But again, also being selective about what you do is extremely important. I have a bomb on hand, I went ahead and used it. And the thing about games like this is a lot of people will jump into it and they'll start just mashing buttons, they'll try to kill everything they can because that's, that's what they're taught to do in, in shoot 'em ups, right? Kill everything, everything must die! But that's not how this game works and you have to approach it uh, with a more, uh, like, you know, methodical approach. Like that guy. I could just skip him. I can skip him, too. Look at that! You don't have to kill everything in this game. Now, again, this guy is a pain in the ass if you're not upgraded. And, you know, whoops! That was my fault. This is true, Aberdeen. Like, I've been covering a bunch of games recently that, you know, AVGN crapped on. And I'm not saying, like, the games don't deserve to be crapped on. But I'm saying, like, uh, usually there's more to them than what you know, people kind of realize. So I made the mistake of trying to destroy those enemies, so I'm just gonna pick that up again. Let me actually bomb real quick. Okay, that actually did absolutely nothing, so... And, again, you've got to learn from your mistakes in a game like this, too. You've got to learn from your mistakes. you got to figure out why you died, and how you're not going to make the same mistake again. Alright, I'm quickly getting overwhelmed here. This is the, to me, this is the hardest boss in the game if you're just starting with pretty much no power-ups, so. Yeah, 
I mean, that's exactly what they're doing, Mike, because a lot of people can't seem to think for themselves. Uh, so... <laughs> but it's also, you know, what the funny thing about AVGN is that that a lot of people, a lot of kids did have those experiences that he describes as they were growing up. But a lot of it stems from not being able to learn from their mistakes or not being able to actually try to get better at the games that they were playing. You know, myself included, there were several games I think he covered that uh, I thought were kind of like complete trash as a kid. But, you know, as an adult, I revisit them and I think about them differently and it's... I was able to beat them without much trouble, like uh, Super Pitfall and The Karate Kid and, and things like that, so... Alright, well, that's Silver Surfer. I'm not going to continue. Uh, we got through a good portion of the game. That was pretty much the last main boss we had to fight. Then we'd go to the final three stages in the game. Um, it does help to be powered up. It does help to know what you're doing, know the levels, and <laughs> be powered up. But it is entirely possible to recover from pretty much every checkpoint in the game. You know, use your bombs at the right times. You know, know what to kill, know what not to kill. And, uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and switch games. Oh, man. Speaking of shooters, this is actually one I have not... Uh, I don't think I've ever actually streamed it on my channel. It's not entirely true. I think I might have actually streamed it on, like, a shmup stream or something. Society, I have a Let's Play of it, dude. I did a Let's Play of it, I think, two years ago. Yeah, for anybody curious... Uh, I always implore people to try to, like, search in my channel first before they ask questions, because when it comes to NES in particular, there's a good chance, like, I've actually already done it. <laughs> but there you go, society. Yeah, I, I have, to answer your question. Over Horizon, just discovered it a couple of days ago. Yeah, I've, I've actually discovered that one recently, being in the, in the last couple of years as well. It's kind of interesting. Mike says, Corn Shack is a real person, though. The nerd isn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, James is just, it's just a character, you know, but people, people do take it seriously. Um. All right, so yeah, this is uh, Silkworms, originally an arcade game, uh, and you can either play as the heli or the jeep, and I want to say the heli was a little bit easier. But I also haven't played this one in probably about a year and a half. I tried learning it last year, and I managed to beat the game once or twice. Um, but I could not do it consistently enough to do a Let's Play of it. It's very, very difficult. Super fast bullets later on in the game. Yeah, so it looks like you actually press the A button to, you know, tilt downward. But that means you have to mash the other button with your thumb already holding the A button. And that right there is a quick shield power up. Another shield right there. Alright, upgraded shot. Now, I, I don't remember, this might be one of those kinds of games where you lose all your power-ups when you die. So getting powered up and being stayed power up, uh, remaining powered up is, is very important. I don't remember how many levels are in this game either, it might be like 9 or 10. Now, I believe there's also an auto-fire power-up that you get eventually. So the whole, like, tilting down and mashing isn't really a problem at that point because you have auto-fire. But right now, there is no auto-fire. You, you have to earn it.
There we go. That's it. We got turbo fire. Stage one down. Yeah, Mike, yeah, his opinions do differ in real life versus, you know, what the, the nerd thinks. Like Aberdeen said, uh, you know, games like Castlevania 2, you know, I think he actually enjoys in real life. And the thing about, again, like I said, the thing about his character is, like, like a lot of the complaints do resonate with people. Like, you know, there are questionable design choices in Castlevania 2. Um, but, does it make the game horrible? I mean, to me, no. Um, you know, it's just things you, you get used to. Which, honestly, it's a lot of, a lot of retro games in a nutshell. It's always stuff that like it's not going to be perfect to you, and you just kind of got to adapt to those those uh, those quirks. And you know, I totally get why someone wouldn't like Super Pitfall in the slightest. I don't blame them. Um, but there's definitely a game there, and there's a game there to be figured out and learned and and. It can still be enjoyable when you know what to do. I had a really funny comment from, I think it was Monolith, on uh, one of my uh, recent Let's Plays. He was like, Man, could you stop making me, like, not hate games that are bad? <laughs> because, like, I'm, like, in my Let's Plays, I'm, like, teaching people how to play the game. I'm like, hey, there's actually something here. It's not all just, you know, AVGN, you know, pull down your pants and drop a turd on it. It's, you know, even some quote-unquote bad games are still interesting, you know, and can be enjoyable under the right circumstances, and I just lost my turbo functionality by dying. Uh. So now my hand's gonna hurt. Society just bought the 2014 Strider game. Nice, you're having fun with it. Hell yeah. Hey, Game Eagle, welcome back. Uh, Aberdeen, I have not. I've, I've barely touched the Amiga. Uh, it's not really something I had access to growing up, and, uh... I've been wanting to put more time into the Amiga in general, um... Through the Mister, actually, because there's a really good Amiga core on it. But I, I found over the years that, like... I don't think I'd be able to get into... Uh, you know... Some of those, you know, 8 and 16-bit computer platforms that much, because, like... It's a lot of quirks to them. I owned an Atari ST for a while. And I realized at the end of the day, I just didn't really have that much fun with it. I think Amiga would probably be a little bit better at least, because it is a lot more colorful and the sound is definitely considerably improved or superior to the Atari ST. But a lot of Amiga games still have some of the issues, some issues that like um, I really don't like. Like a lot of games will only have music or sound effects, not both. And that sort of thing just drives me up the wall as someone that grew up on console gaming where just about everything did have music and sound effects at all times, so it's like, um... But there are exceptions, like, I really want to get into, like, the Amiga Shadow of the Beast, you know, it does have music and sound effects, and it's a beautiful looking game on the, on the platform. And, um... But yeah, there's some stuff on the Amiga I, I want to try to get into, but I don't, I don't know. Not, it's not high on my priority list, you know what I mean.
<laughs> Monolith is watching this in the shower. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> yeah, no, Monolith, I was, I was talking about a comment that you left on one of my recent Let's Plays where it was like, you said something like, Stop making me hate bad games as much. <laughs> or like... Stop making me not hate bad games as much. Something like that. I was like, well that's kind of like... Part of the reason I want to learn like more bad games too, because like... I think even some of like the uh... Quote unquote well-known bad games you saw on, you know, AVGN or something like that, or they still have merits, and they're, they can still be fun at the end of the day. It doesn't matter to me if they're good or bad, it's just, are they fun? Are they interesting? That's kind of my take on, on you know, video games as a whole now, but, but specifically retro games, where we've had decades to go over their, their positive and negative traits and put some kind of arbitrary label on them as to whether they're actually good or bad. Except for the controls and the lack of music. Well, see that? See that's a deal breaker for me, Aberdeen. If it's got no music and the controls aren't very good, then uh, even if the graphics are nicer, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It just it doesn't really do anything for me. I need the whole package. I can't have nice graphics but no music. You know, music is a huge part of the gaming experience for me. Even on NES. You know, not exactly the most complex sound hardware, but I need some tunage in the background. And, uh, yeah, I would imagine Silkworm probably looks nicer uh, in the arcade. And then I, I would imagine the Amiga replicated that look probably a lot better than the NES did. I mean, that was the one, one of the things about the Amiga, is it had just, it was, you know... It could push, like, big sprites around, and it was, uh, you know, huge color palette. It just looked super colorful, bright. And so when they were arcade ports to the Amiga, a lot of times they looked really good. Although in a lot of videos I've seen, I do question their frame rates sometimes. <laughs> I think it was, like, Time Soldiers or something. I think it got an Amiga port. <laughs> I was looking at that on YouTube. I was like, oh, jeez. It definitely looks closer to the arcade game than something like on the Master System, but it I'm pretty sure it ran quite choppy and uh Yeah, I don't know. It is something I'll dive into one day when I have more more time to just experiment with stuff. Um because I do have I do have like most of the library I'm pretty sure is on my Mister. I'm pretty sure I've got most of the Amiga set up. Is the original Castlevania on the Amiga? Hey, Chris, uh, it is. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's interesting. That's actually one I kind of wish I did this past October. Yeah, Castlevania on the Amiga is also, it's, ooh, wow. Thanks, Hitbox. I actually dodged that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very choppy on the Amiga. It looks interesting, but... Mike, yeah, so Mike says, your Mega Man DOS uh, video gave me more of an appreciation for it, and uh, you honestly feel bad for all the times you ripped on it after learning how much of a passion project it was, right? It totally was a passion project. Like, I always enjoyed the game because I had Mega Man MS-DOS growing up as a kid, so, like, I learned it, I played it a lot growing up. Um, same with Mega Man 3, but I had an even greater appreciation for it when I watched the uh, Gaming Historian video on it where the original programmer, you know, went into all the details about it. And I was like, holy crap, that's really, that's really something, you know? Um, and again, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't expect people to like, to love it or even like it or like want to play it. But, you know, a lot of games do get kind of unnecessarily just trashed on without much, uh, oh, I thought I could grab that without taking damage. 
uh, without much like thought put into it or not not a lot of information given uh, I don't even know what I'm saying I'm trying to dodge bullets and talk at the same time which is easier said than done a lot of people will just bash stuff without really you know knowing much about said thing that they're actually bashing so you know especially no per actual personal experience for more than two seconds Um, yeah, see, really the only way to get actual weapon upgrades is destroying these sort of like helicopter, you know, vehicle combinations. There we go. Twin shot. I'd rather have turbo, but I think you only get turbo after you get your twin shot. Yeah, you can see how this game can be uh, pretty challenging. Also a memorizer. Oh yeah, and I hear that, Mike. I, I started playing Metroid Other M uh, last week or the week before. And... Uh, yeah, well, there's some things I really do not like about it. Um, like, the whole forced story, not being able to skip through it, really kills the, the, the pace of the game. But the actual gameplay itself, when you're actually in, you're actually playing, it's pretty good. I was like, damn, I really wish I had played this back when I first had it, like 10 years ago. Um, and I'm getting kind of close to the end of the game, I think. Um... And yeah, it's it's a solid game, and it's one that I'm now going to recommend to people. I'm like, I'll be like, yeah, story's garbage, but you know, if you can withstand that, um, you know, you'll probably enjoy the game, the actual gameplay, because it is like a fun game. There are definitely some things I, I personally wish they did differently, but you know, it's not they're not deal breakers. Can I even? Okay, are you gonna are you gonna go backwards at all? <laughs> or is he just gonna stay there? Like I can't even I can't even get down to shoot him now. I don't think I can shoot him vertically. Yeah, it's not even registering. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a boss go all the way across the screen like that. Because I usually kill them fast. Oh yeah, this is one of the other things about this game, is the bullets just do not stop. Okay, he does. Nice. Game over? No, not game over yet. Okay, good. We got him. <laughs> All right, see you, Monolith. Hey, Fat Shark, welcome. Metroid Other M has 3D Shine Spark. It does. It does. A Shadow of the Beast live stream. I have uh, multiple Sega Genesis playthroughs of that, Aberdeen. But yeah, you know, I would love to do the Amiga version one day. Absolutely. Fat Sharks, this is, reminds me a bit of Choplifter on Commodore 64. Oh, Crestline's here. Welcome back, Crestline. Monolith said that was on Mylon Secret Castle? I thought it was on, like, a uh, Super Pitfall or something like that. Or maybe it was Mylon Secret Castle. I'll have to go back and check a, you know, check it out. Mylon Secret Castle, I did I did several years ago now. But yeah, it's another one of those games that a lot of people bash on, but... I grew up with that game, so I'm kind of biased, but... 
I do feel like it's a really solid game when you learn how to play it. Lago says he explored the Amiga library a few years ago, and it was an interesting experience. Lionheart, in particular, became a favorite of his. Very nice. Yeah, I, I know that there are, like, really solid Amiga games that are extremely comparable, if not better, than, like, a lot of console stuff we were playing back in the day. Like, they got great graphics, good gameplay, music, and sound at the same time, all that stuff. Um, but it seems like, you know, the average game was kind of lacking in some area. You know, either it didn't have sound effects or it didn't have music, or it was like, it looked good, but it was choppy. Uh, or like, maybe it even ran well, but the collision detection was horrible and it made the game almost unplayable. You know, there's always seems to be like something with those uh, computer games of the era that just drives me up a wall, so. Mike says, people read way too deep into the authorization system for a sliver of social commentary that was never there. Yep. <laughs> game Eagles has unpopular opinion from him. He still thinks Streets of Rage 1 is the best game in the Streets of Rage series. Hmm. Yeah, very unpopular opinion, but... I could see how some people would love the first one over the others. I mean, it's, it's a good game. It's a, it's a very good game. I learned that a couple years ago as well, and I, I, I now have a newfound appreciation for Streets of Rage 1. So either I have one life left, or I'm on my last life. Some games handle the, you know, lives times one thing uh, on your HUD differently. And it's probably going to be difficult to recover. Ooh, wow. Man, the hitbox of this thing is really small, and that's not a complaint. I wish war games would have small hitboxes as, as opposed to, like, massive ones. By the way, the- yeah, so it said, uh, lives times one? No. No, I, I had- I had no lives left. <laughs> I'd rather have it say zero as opposed to, uh, you know, lives times one. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so Mike, I guess my issue with the authorization system in, in Other M is that, um, you know, you just end up activating your power-ups for arbitrary reasons. And, like, if that was the first game of its kind, then it wouldn't be a problem. But the problem is that there were many other Metroid games prior to it that did not require that. So... For a long-established series that had already been around for, um, geez, close to 30 years by that point, it was a very, very poor design choice. Um, you know, if it was just some brand new game with brand new characters and protagonists and authority leaders, that would be different, but it's Metroid. We, Samus is a badass, and she never had to do that in other games. Why does she have to do it all of a sudden now? You know, so that, I could see that rubbing people the wrong way. Um, and also the story, you know, if the I wouldn't care about the story being the way it is if I didn't have to sit through it every time I played the game. I, ju I just feel like it's such a time waster. And uh, if I could just hit the start button and skip through it, I'd be totally okay. If I could just get right to the gameplay, then it's not. it wouldn't even be like a, a part of the conversation, honestly. It's like, well, I don't like the story. You might like it. I don't. But I could skip through it. It's okay, right? But no. They, they shove it down your throat, you know, and you're just stuck with it, and it sucks. So it, you know, <laughs> if I was going to play another Metroid game, or, or if I had a choice to play like any Metroid game, it probably would not be Other M for that reason, because I know other Metroid games would, would flow a lot better, I'd get a lot more done a lot faster, and I'd be more satisfied, but... Um, that I, for me, that's the unfortunate thing about Other M, is they made just really dumb design choices like that, that just irritate some players, like myself. Um, and as, as, as a result, it kind of has to be brought up if I'm going to recommend it to someone or something like that. It's like, hey, the game itself, the gameplay is really fun, looks great, it plays pretty well, but just be warned, yada yada yada, you're going to have to sit through cutscenes, you know, that would be my, my you know, a quick review to someone if they were asking me if they should play it or not. I do absolutely implore people to try it out, though, because it's... yeah. It's a, it's a really solid game. 
There are some there are some gameplay mechanics I wish were a little bit different. Like I do wish enemies dropped some health here and there. Like in classic Metroids, it would give me more of a reason to actually kill the enemies. Because like halfway through my playthrough, I realized that like I didn't really have to kill things unless the game forced me to. And I, I just after a point, I just started running past everything. <laughs> Because there was, I wasn't gonna get anything for it, um, but it is what it is. Yeah, and I totally agree, Mike. I totally agree. Yeah, and Shaw, no, I totally get that, but just, you know, from, uh, it was just dumb. <laughs> Fans saw it as dumb, you know, they saw through the BS, basically, and, you know, they, they were right for it. Like, I, I feel like there there could have been a different way of, of doing it, instead of making, you know, implementing something that's so arbitrary. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, society. There's that too. Yeah. Totally. Alright, I'm uh, looking through my list of games. Here's actually one I'll, uh, I'll mess around with for a little bit. You know, I, I probably... I was going to try to do games that... I, uh, I haven't done much before, but, you know, I'm just kind of like going around and just trying to play some stuff that I, I feel like playing. And, uh... Stern Pinball uh, actually just released a Godzilla pinball machine. I've been playing a lot recently, so I'll play like a level or two of this game, and then we'll switch over to something else. Yeah, same here, Game Eagle. I, I mean, that's one reason why I've always appreciated Metroid, is they were very much less story-focused than other games. It was like, like it's been said, it's like you kind of just fill in the blanks yourself. Ha <laughs> no Aberdeen. <laughs> Alright. So this is Godzilla. Uh, actually kind of another one a lot of people like to crap on, but I'm not gonna say you're defending this one. That's not the purpose of this stream. But uh, it was one I grew up with as a kid. I've always enjoyed it. I did a full playthrough of it um, either last year or the year before. So I do have a complete playthrough of this, start from finish, start to finish. I think it took us several hours to get through the whole thing. It is kind of a grueling experience. Uh, you hit start to use your breath. There we go. You can actually jump and use your tail whip on the ground. Or not on the ground. Your ground tail whip in the air. Yeah, B punches, A kicks. Actually, at the moment where I've got to use the restroom again, I probably should have done that first before I actually uh, started playing this game. <laughs> but yeah, every level's got this grid like this. It's filled with bosses on one side, your main characters on the other. Um, and uh, you can play as both Godzilla and Mothra. Uh, Mothra can move more spaces than Godzilla. And you kind of want to have each character kill uh, or fight bosses relatively evenly because your characters do level up and their health bars do extend through leveling up. So it's kind of important to kind of keep both characters nearby. Godzilla is by far much better than Mothra in terms of strength. You know, killing bosses quickly, that sort of thing. But you don't want to get stuck in a situation later on in the game where, like, Godzilla dies and you got to do all the bosses with Mothra. But Mothra's at a really, really low level because you haven't used her. So, yeah, you want to try to fight bosses relatively evenly. There are multiple uh, objects on the playfield as well that you can attack that'll help you level up. Uh, sort of like mini boss areas. It's kind of interesting. Godzilla 2 on NES was totally different. It was a turn-based strategy game. Um, 
think like Advance Wars or something. Um, yeah, that one always kind of threw me for a loop growing up, is that it was so different from the first game. I still ended up enjoying it uh, after I put a lot of time into it, but uh, I always preferred the first Godzilla because it was more like dumb fun action. Also, the soundtrack was pretty good in the game. Hey, Venom! <laughs> and now I'm in the mood to play a round of Archon. <laughs> I have never actually played Archon. Is that like one of the chess games? Or am I thinking of something else? Famicom Wars, yeah. More like that. Yeah, unfortunately, Gazora here could just like corner me as Mothra. I mean, I guess you could potentially do it with the Godzilla as well. But generally with Godzilla, you've already wrecked his ass before he gets to the other side of the screen. Alright, what I'm gonna do is actually go here and then here. Because that next tile, I think, is one of those, like, mini-boss areas, and I might be able to level up Mothra. Yeah, this big old brain thing. I don't even know if this is from, like, a Godzilla movie, or if this is just, uh, you know, something else. So one of the interesting things about this thing is that after you, like, hit its main area, its hitbox changes. And you kind of have to figure out where that is. Oh, it's still there. I guess my main shot wouldn't work anymore. Yeah, I didn't get a level up for that. Leveling up might also be based on points, I don't even think about it. Yeah, there's some shots that enemies do where if you collide with them with your own shots, like, your character gets forced all the way to, like, the back side of the screen. So, for this part, it's, uh, those turrets, lasers. Alright. With Mothra, if I wanted to, I could just skip through a lot of this. Now, you do have to have both Kaiju at the, um... Uh, the end of the map, both Mothra and uh, Godzilla have to exit. Alright. Yeah, Lonely Up has got to be based on points, and I don't like to think about it. Did I ever play the Godzilla for PlayStation 4? I did not. I wanted to, but I did not. And apparently it's kind of uncommon now, so you just don't really see it for sale. Carl says, Gizora isn't even from a Godzilla movie. He's from another movie called Space Amoeba. <laughs> Was that also a Toho property? I, I like that though, like grabbing, uh, you know, enemies from different properties from like the same company and bringing them together in a video game. Yeah, Aberdeen, a lot of these sprites look really solid for, for NES games. They're some really big ones. It's really cool. Um, well, I guess I'll go ahead and just fight this guy again. Mogera. It was also Toho, Carl says. Okay, cool. That makes sense then. Sean says, Archon is pretty much chest, uh, but the units fight each other in overhead arena duels. Okay, that sounds kind of cool. I'm almost tempted to try that out. <laughs> Venom says, those boss backgrounds are rich and detailed. Alright, smartass. <laughs> 
All right, so you got to remember, a lot of 8-bit games, uh, what they ended up doing for things like big bosses with black backgrounds is they basically used... I don't think they had actual, like, foreground sprites for the bosses. They were actually using, like, the background layer to render the boss. Very, very common on NES and uh, Master System games in particular. You guys gotta keep that in mind when you see, uh, you know, boss, big bosses on black backgrounds. If there's a black background, there's a good chance that uh, they're using the uh, the background layer to uh, to display the boss. Mike says Toho was the first to create a shared cinematic universe. Destroy all monsters with their was their kind of Avengers. I mean, I guess what I wanted to say is like, I guess it's fair to critique. It's like, oh, look, there's there's no background, but you do, like, when we make those comments, we have to understand how like a lot of this tech actually worked. Um. You know, these were not the 16-bit platforms with, uh, <laughs> advanced, <laughs> advanced, uh, graphics technologies and whatnot, uh, so, you know, there were lots of limitations back then on the, uh, the 8-bit hardware in particular. What I'll probably end up doing is actually, once I beat this level, I'll just switch over to, to a different game. Because this is kind of like the whole game. It just gets bigger and bigger. Uh, more bosses and more bosses. So Godzilla is one of those kinds of games where it's like, you've seen one level, you've seen most of them. It repeats the same kind of level structure over and over again. And it can definitely get repetitious. Definitely the kind of game where I'd probably recommend playing it, like, level by level here and there. You do get passwords. Or if you're on, like, a flashcard or the mister, you can actually save state. That's how I would recommend playing a game like this. It is tough to do in one sitting. It is, like, several hours long. Which is actually way too long for the kind of game it is. Actually, you know what I'll do is, um... All right, so we just moved Mothra to the next field, and now we have to bring Godzilla all the way over. But remember, Godzilla can only go two spaces at a time. So... Yeah, Godzilla's uh, breath is pretty awesome in this game, though. And as you level up, his power meter extends. Both your power and your health meter can go all the way across the screen. So later on in the game, you will be able to use your, like, your breath way more often, which means you can go through these levels faster. Yeah, his fists are also really powerful. Uh, no, well, I wouldn't say really powerful, but they're really fast, and so you can attack quite rapidly. And his kicks are a lot stronger. Um, and they also attack pretty fast, too, so it's just like... You know, boom, 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 boom.
Hey, Jeff. Are you enjoying your video game playing today? Always. Well, maybe not always, but yes, today I am. Are you enjoying your whatever today? Whatever that may be. Actually, I just realized I think my score is combined between both characters. I don't think Godzilla has a separate score from Mothra. Yeah, some of these enemies too, you can't really tell if you're actually doing damage because there's no sound. There's no sound cue when you attack them. Some enemies have sound cues, others don't. So, you know, trying to figure out where the hitbox is can be a little weird sometimes. Word, Jeff. But yeah, now we have another boss. I think that's Varen or Varan, however you pronounce it. Um, yeah, every level like extends the, uh, you know, the amount of bosses that you can fight. Some levels are really big, others are really small. Uh, this one is quite large. So this is the Mister Menu. So what I can do is I, I can do a save state actually. Um, there we go. Cool. So I just saved my state. Um, but I can also reset the game, and let's do, um... Is there a reason to swap? Uh, yeah, because each character is basically a life. And when both characters die, it's game over. So, you want to learn how to play as both characters, because... They're your lives! <laughs> If you only play as Godzilla, uh, Godzilla's gonna eventually die. You're gonna have to take over as Mothra and vice versa. So you wanna try to get both of them leveled up. You don't wanna be stuck on like uh, King Ghidorah with just Mothra, for instance. Like, you know, it, 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 there's a strategy element too. Um, now, as far as like making both characters exit at the end of the map, that is a little irritating. Um, but I guess on the other hand, you know, you. As you're fighting through each tile, you know, you're technically, I guess, getting points and potentially leveling up. Uh, Game Eagle, this is not two players. No, it's just a one player experience. Uh, but what I was going to say is we can go to Password Game. Do they recover health when they're inactive? Uh, they might. I don't remember. But every level has health drops. It's, it's very easy to get your health back in the levels themselves. Uh, I think there is no O. so cool. You can actually fight every boss in the game on the very first level. Uh, now the problem with this is that your characters are all at level 1. So, uh, we'll, we'll attempt this, but I don't think it's going to work out too well. <laughs> I really don't think it's going to work out too well.
Oh, my characters are at level 8. Okay. That's good. I thought we were at level 1. But still, I'd rather be, like, maxed out. Because, again, your health bar, you pretty much go all the way across the screen. Second, guys. To bed. Oh man. Well, good to have you, Nihilus. It's been a while. Alright, um. I feel like I should just leave my characters here, actually. And just let the bosses come over. And I'm just gonna do the same thing again. unfortunate part about doing this is that well I should maybe I should move Mothra over here move her next to Godzilla Gigan. Gigan was always a favorite enemy of mine back in the day. Just the blades coming out of his stomach were so cool. I'll do the same thing again, just let the bosses come to me. There's Mecha Godzilla. doesn't seem like mashing the buttons or anything does anything for you. And the funny thing is this boss barely does any damage. Uh, let's go ahead and bring... No, I'm just gonna leave Godzilla here. So I know bosses are gonna, yeah, come up to me like that, and they're gonna try to attack me from the other side. again.
Yeah, Sean, the bosses are uh, pretty well animated. For the era. You know, they're definitely dated now, but... They're effective enough. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and leave Mothra here. Fight Gazora again. Fight him now. Baragon. Oh, I barely get anything. I like to just kick him in the face. you're doing damage on bosses because they blink. Alright, let's go ahead and finish this one off. Yeah, so you basically have a time limit on the bosses. It's kind of in the background. And if you don't beat the boss in time, um, it'll basically go to either the opponent's chance to move or your chance to move. And if it's your chance to move, you can move away from the boss like, play a couple more levels to get your health back, and then try to fight the boss again. That's kind of the purpose of that. Alright, see you, Carl. Take care. Oops. Uh, what am I doing? Mr. Why did you do that? No, get out of here. Thank you. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, I'm going to actually move Godzilla down here because I don't trust Mothra against Gigan. Yeah, everyone's lining up to bully Mothra. <laughs> Poor Mothra. You know what might end up happening is like the hitbox just disappears for a little while and you have to just wait for the comeback. I wonder if that's what's happening. We got it. If I remember correctly, I think I liked kicking him in the face. Kicking does feel like it's a little bit safer than punching. Like when he's got his blades out. But punching does such rapid damage. Just boom, 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 boom. Yeah, his blades do a lot of damage, though. Alright, come on, man. Get out of my way. Yeah, he basically pinned me down.
Nice. Alright, I'm just gonna sit here. Alright, I guess we're fighting him with Godzilla. Tickle, tickle, tickle! <laughs> Alright, the smog monster. Find Mecha Godzilla now. He's got almost double the health bar. Yeah, we're totally just gonna be trading hits on this one. Game Eagle made it to Jorno last night. In <laughs> society, he goes to Taco Bell to get his Pizza Hut. Oh. Pizza Hut light. Trying to finish off Mecha Godzilla. Finish Hidora. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, Godzilla was absolutely. He was like a result of the, uh, he was like a commentary on nuclear warfare, basically. going to assume also a byproduct of the bombings of Japan.
The original Godzilla. This was like before it turned into like a, a hokey, just monster bash fest. First, the original Godzilla was kind of dark. Like, no pun intended, I mean, it's a black and white film, but, like, it's kind of a morbid piece of work. So I'm gonna, you know, prep Godzilla. I'm gonna move him towards King Ghidorah, and hopefully just let him sit there. Hey Mario, welcome back. Now, since, you know, I guess my characters aren't really going to get leveled up further. I could have swore like I could get my health bar all the way across the screen. Maybe I'm just mistaken. It has been a couple years since I ran through this game and really played it last. But yeah, with Mothra, I can just, I can just fly straight through. Attempt to, anyway. And after I try King Ghidorah, we'll play a different game. I think I'm gonna also take a quick restroom break. We've been at this for about two hours now. And uh, I could definitely use some more caffeine. Was the Oxygen Destroyer uh, a plot point in the first Godzilla movie, Mike? I can't remember. Because I know they still use that plot point in later Godzilla movies. Especially the Western ones. The unfortunate Western ones. Created by a scientist named Sarazawa. Okay. Alright, so this is technically the final boss in the game, but when using this password, you can fight every boss on the first level. And it's not just the first level, you can you basically go through the whole game 
with every boss on every level. So it's kind of like a crazy new game plus. But it's a fun way of experiencing all the boss fights without having to play through the whole game. But King Ghidorah can be a cheap bastard. Alright, so that was basically the monster's turn, so he chose to fight me again, which they always will. <laughs> they pretty much will always fight you if they're next to you. And Godzilla's dead. Uh, Aberdeen, it's based on your power meter, and it just depends on how much of the power meter it takes up. I think right now it takes up about half of the power meter, so as long as it charges up past the halfway point, I can use it again. Oops. Hey, Luigi, welcome. how fast my health drops when he gets cornered, or when I get cornered. Alright, we got this. Unfortunately, Godzilla's dead. <laughs> All I have to do is just make it through to the end of the level with one character, and then Godzilla will come back on the next level. But I guess we're gonna find out, because again, it's been a little while since I played this. I did a full run on Twitch a couple years ago, just to relearn the game, and then I did a full stream on YouTube afterwards. And after that, I was like, alright, I've had enough Godzilla for a while. <laughs> It's a, it's a long playthrough, and doing two back-to-back -back uh, can be grueling, to say the least. Now, you'll notice that there are those, like, bright orange orbs. They, uh... They can kill you almost instantly if you're not careful. That's one of the big threats, you know, in the game. Let's see if Godzilla pops back up. Mars. Yep, there he is. So, yeah. Uh, again, these are basically your lives. You have two lives. And as long as you can get to the end with one, um, you know, the other one will come back if you lost them. Oh, it doesn't actually do all monsters on every level. It's just the first level. Okay. Interesting. Well, that's cool. Yeah, so I guess if you just beat all the bosses in the first level, you can consider yourself done. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's Godzilla in a nutshell. Um, let's see. You know, I haven't actually played this in a in a really long time, but uh We're gonna try the second Godzilla, but what I'm gonna do is actually take a quick uh, bathroom break. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get myself some more caffeine, and then we will uh, we'll continue. Yeah, 
Yeah, I will be right back. Uh, don't go anywhere. Or go somewhere and come back.
Yeah, so some of you guys had mentioned this one while I was playing the other Godzilla, so I figured I'd show it off, because I've never actually shown it on my channel before. And I have not played this in a long, long time. But yeah, you have all these uh, scenarios. I guess you just try to go through the whole game one by one. But we'll start off with the resurrection of Godzilla. And yeah, you play as a military in this, and your goal is to take down the monsters. And I don't remember if, like, buildings or anything do anything. Scientist, Dr. Sarazawa, there we go. <laughs> Okay, I guess you can actually talk to your people. Um, you can turn the music off. That's funny. Uh, music on. Status. Fighter, attacker. Okay, it just gives you, like, the, the health. So, list. So, I'm thinking I don't... Okay, I guess I can technically move any of these... So, jets and bombers, I guess, can only go so far. Turn-based strategy is not really my thing. Um, you know, I, I can kind of zone out to one every now and then, but it's, it's not something I do regularly. But, you know, as a kid, I, I played genres like these more often because it's what I had access to. Like, one of my neighbors down the street... Uh, one of my neighbors down the street actually owned this, and so I got to play it quite a bit. Okay, I was wondering if, like, I could move less if I, like, went off the, uh, the main path. I'm just moving all my guys over there, because I think on this first level it might just be Godzilla that I have to fight. But later on in the game you have different monsters. Okay, yeah, you move farther on the, uh, the, uh, the pathway. So I guess if you're going through cities, you can move less. Alright, makes- it make- it makes sense. In turn? Hey, Savannah, how's it going? Welcome back. Oh, that's right, he could destroy locations. I forgot about that. There's a roulette system, too. Okay. More of a slot machine. Alright. <laughs> you went kaboom. Take a while getting everybody over to Godzilla. Intelligent systems? Uh, I, I have no idea, Mike. I really don't. I really don't know. 
I always assume this is just Japanese developed. I don't remember what intelligence systems actually did. I'd have to look them up. My general, like, random gaming knowledge like that is, like, shrinking rapidly as I get older. Alright, let's go ahead and end our turn, and while we end our turn, I will Google that. So I'll do missiles. Oh, they made Famicom Wars and Fire Emblem, gotcha. <laughs> Someone else appeared. <laughs> and of course, all my entire army is up at Godzilla. So, whoops. Wow, and Godzilla got some health back, too. Oops. Don't move. Just attack. Yeah, I'm finding the same thing, Sean. It's I just see Toho, so it's entirely possible just Toho made it. Uh, I'm pretty sure they just they made the first game too. Either that, or they contracted somebody, and it was one of those, like... Just kind of like ghost developers that, like, no one knows of. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I can, uh... Go into the water, which is weird. And I don't know what, like, the symbols do. Alright, I'm just gonna leave my guys here. Just not... Well... Just gonna focus on Godzilla for now and just let the other guy destroy my city. We're not gonna play this long, I just wanted to show it off. Um, well, I'll leave those guys there. Turn. And I think he's dead. Yep, he's toast. If any of you guys uh, played Super Godzilla on Super Nintendo, I've always wondered what that one was like. I've never actually played it. I always assumed it was a little more like this game. <laughs> no understanding of personal boundaries. Well, it's a cat. Cats don't know that. <laughs> You're lucky to, to, to find a cat that will get up on you, because a lot of cats are very offstandish, and they'll just, like, run away or just, you know... Yeah, you'll you'll learn to tolerate it. With my cat, like right now, I've got my door closed, so she can't come in and bug me. You know, you just you kind of oops. I actually didn't want to do gun. I wanted to do my missile. It's okay. She keeps jumping on your keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> She wants attention. She wants you to 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 pet her. The 
only seen the ABGN video. It has a really weird fighting system. Okay. I'll have to look that up. Check out the cutting room floor. There's usually some good information on, on some games like these. Wow, it says <laughs> the developers are not currently known. Wow. Wow, and the game was never actually released in Japan either, but it still has some Japanese text inside the game. So it sounds like it was developed, it was probably developed by a Japanese studio. I mean, maybe if maybe Toho had their own internal development studio for a little while, um, or they contracted it out to some phantom developer that, you know, was uncredited. So it's interesting. Queen Patchy, that's right, Chris. <laughs> she's out uh, in the living room. She's on a. She's sleeping on one of her cat beds right now. Godzilla just keeps getting his life back too. But at least you do more damage than just like one sometimes. If you, I guess you get like a good draw. Oh, okay, so these can actually go into the water. I just was like limited on my um, my moves, I guess. Blame Micronics. I feel like it's unfair to give Micronics crap when it came to like their earlier releases. But when it was like 1990 and they're still doing stuff that looked like it was 86, yeah, that, that was a problem. But a lot of the earlier stuff, like they weren't using like advanced memory mappers or anything like that. Uh, so it, like it's understandable that like like Ghosts and Goblins came out the way it did. You know, visually and whatnot, Ghosts and Goblins in the arcade was way more complex than Super Mario Brothers ever was. Uh, and so bringing that home to NES without, you know, the more advanced technology from the later 80s, the late 80s, you know, it kind of made sense it turned out the way it did. But yeah, then I mean, their stuff just continued to be, like, the same as the 80s went on. I don't, I don't hate all my Chronics games either. Like, there's some games, like, I really love Twin Cobra, even though it's still janky. It's still fun. Your son named her Morgan. <laughs> You're gonna call her Poof. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see if we can just use Gun. Hey, Dasan. Kill Godzilla? No. Oh, I can't remember. Do you have to, like... I feel like... You might be able to have these buildings actually, like, manufacture vehicles for you. Activate the destroyer in water and you will be able to defeat Godzilla within a five block radius. Okay. Um, question is, how do I do that?
Atom bomb. Hmm. This is none. Maybe they have to develop it, and after a couple of turns, it becomes available. Just been playing the arcade version of that via the M2 collection. Not easy. Oh, the arcade twin Cobra. I was like, what is he talking about? I thought you were talking ghosts and goblins. Okay. Sorry, busy. Yeah, it looks like they're developing it. It's not obvious because, like, you click it and it doesn't say anything. But now it says, sorry, busy. All right, let's uh, just end my turn and see what happens. Nothing. <laughs> Did absolutely nothing. Hmm. Now supplying. Yeah, so you can. Okay. Oh no. No, I have to move the bomb. What? All right, this is getting tedious already. <laughs> this is not my cup of tea. Oh. Oh, I wonder if I can... Mm, I wonder if I can, like, move a bomber on top of it and pick it up? I don't know. We'll try it. Toast. Well, it's a turn-based strategy game, Dasan. I mean, it's very different from something like SimCity, but... Yeah. It's, a uh, It's an acquired taste. Strategy games like these are not usually my kind of thing. They're not my cup of tea. But, I did play this one as a kid, and I just cancelled out my attack. I wish it was a little more obvious as to, like, what you were doing. Like, when you, when you select something on the menu, it, a lot of times it, it does, gives you, like, no prompt after that telling you exactly what's gonna happen. Oh, I, so you can actually kill Godzilla just like that. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I thought I had to carry a bomb to him. Okay. So this is sorry, busy still. Airbase doesn't have any backups. Army base doesn't have anything. Load the atom bomb uh, onto a trailer. You can allure God's allure. <laughs> I, I'm gonna guess it, they mean lure Godzilla to your direction. Okay. Um, Baragon can move underground. You can track Baragon with the mobile radar. Okay, that's what the radar is for. Hmm. 
Erases nothing. I guess that's it. Um, maybe I should start moving people down here. Okay, there he is. Oh, now I get the trailer. It's like, uh... The bomb is all the way on the other side of the screen. Alright. Are you going to play something more fast-paced? Well, you should have been here the last three hours when I was playing things more fast-paced. <laughs> I'm just bouncing to random genres. I'm not, I'm not really, I don't have anything specific in mind today. Which is why we're playing something like Godzilla 2. And it's fun messing around with games like these I haven't played in a long time. Try to move everybody back down. But we're only gonna do this one level. When I'm done with this level, we're gonna play something else. Yeah, so, Sean, the lab was apparently making the destroyer. I think that's what they said it was. And you're supposed to be able to drop that in water and just, I guess, I'm gonna guess, like, insta-kill Godzilla. But we had already killed Godzilla normally, so, it, you know. I guess it's not really all that useful right now, anyway. Yeah, Desan, I always forget about that version of SimCity. I guess I never really messed around with it because I, I just felt it would be kind of redundant because I can just play Super Nintendo SimCity. Um, I feel like NES SimCity is one of those where like just watching videos would be enough for me. I don't really feel like I need to try it. There are a lot of other games that um, are different that I would rather try first before that. Because again, I can play some city elsewhere and with better in you know better variations. But yeah, I remember checking out some videos when that first came out though. It, you know, looks cool. I do wish it came out back in the day. You know, I didn't get a Super Nintendo till like late late '93. Uh, so you know, it's one of those games I definitely would have played on my NES for sure. Simzilla would not work. This is nothing like SimCity. <laughs> yes, it's tile-based, but you're not building stuff in this game, for the most part. Uh, you know, you're not laying down roads and connecting power lines and... There he is. He's trying to get away from us, that little bastard. But yeah, for those of you guys that don't know, this is a part of the turn-based strategy game genre. That, that is what it is. No ifs, ands, or buts. It is a turn-based strategy game. Definitely not the most exciting of, uh, of them. That's what it is. 
This is a genre that was honestly not super common on consoles back in the day, so like... You know, it was always disappointed this was related to Godzilla and not something else, because I really liked the first Godzilla on NES. Because uh, that was an action game. A unique action game, but it was an action game. Alright, let's finally attack him. Simzilla is a reference to the AVGN episode. Oh, jeez. More AVGN references, you people on the internet, I swear. Hey, Scarlet, welcome back. I mean, Design, I would argue the Super Nintendo one was, like, way better than the PC version. They added so much to the SNES game, uh, in terms of visuals and sounds in particular. You go back and play the original SimCity on PC, it is, uh... It is pretty bare-bones in terms of aesthetics. I still play the Windows 95 version, uh, occasionally. Load! Got it. <laughs> could probably use the A-bomb, but then I'd blow up the whole city. turn. Godzilla for the Game Boy. Yeah, I totally forgot there was Godzilla on that. I never got to play that. Yeah, I never got a chance. Yeah, the gifts are, are really nice bonuses, but then you have, uh... Yeah, I mean, just the, the aesthetic improvement just adds so much to a game like that, if you ask me. You know, the PC version doesn't really have, like, much in the way of, like, music and stuff like that, and... Obviously being, uh, you know, an 80s game is very bare bones visually. I mean, I still love playing SimCity on PC, don't get me wrong. But yeah, the SNES version was just like, a huge improvement in just about every way. And then you had some of like the Nintendo-isms, like, instead of Godzilla taking down the town, it's... Or not, or like, a, a generic kaiju, it was... King Bowser, or King Koopa. <laughs> you know, that's always, that was always fun. Yeah, we do a lot more damage to Baragon. We've wiped out all the monsters! Well, for now. Asterix game? No, not really. I've never followed the Asterix series. It's not something I grew up with. <laughs> Poor Godzilla. Waving his white flag. But yeah, you've got, I guess, the 12 missions, and then... Well, that's pretty much it. Uh, the last and most ferocious battle retained peace on Earth. Looks like we got Ghidorah, not Ghidorah, uh, Gizora, and then Faran, or something like that. 
Oh, wow, they don't even, uh... Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I could see where I would totally get fed up with this, because this is like... You don't even have any equipment right now. You have to make it. Oh, it was Rodan. I don't know why I said Ferran. I think it's because he had a... Yeah, he's got an F right there. It's Rodan. I should know that, actually. Yeah, so you have to actually make your stuff 100% now. And the monsters have already appeared. Mazer. Okay, yeah, the Mazer, that's a part of the series. That's in the new pinball machine. We're going to attempt to assemble SY3, transport three parts of SY3 from your bases, and carry them in. Oh, God, I gotta move parts to that. Tank. Trailer. Yeah, I can see how this last level could be a real pain in the ass. Super X2. Oh, geez, he's already there. Um... And that's it. Um, yeah, I don't even want to know how complex this gets. My brain's already starting to struggle just thinking about it. <laughs> but yeah, that's Godzilla 2. It's cool to show it off, because... I especially don't really show off many uh, strategy games on this channel. Um, let's see what I want to try. What do I want to play? <sighs> I, I don't even know what the SimCity trading card game is, Pensive. I don't know every game out there in existence. I know a lot, but I don't know all of them. I've never even heard of the SimCity trading card game. <laughs> so, I have no idea. I probably don't want to know, actually. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna play some Journey to Silius for a little bit. We'll see what we can do with this. I haven't actually beaten this game in a long time, so... Uh, eh, we'll see. Hey, Adrian, welcome back. Oh, you gotta be freaking kidding me. Seriously, dude. Hey, Spike, welcome back. Oh, really, Chris? That's that's funny. I'm not gonna play nearly as well in this, because I haven't played in a while. This is definitely a memorizer. You, you've gotta memorize everything. Otherwise, you know, you take too much damage, you die, you gotta start over, and... And that's fine. I don't mind that style of gameplay. You could say that's very 8-bit, in a way. <laughs> Games be memorization heavy. There's a lot of, like, just waiting in this, and the reason I died there is, like, I, I decided to jump too early and I ran into the, you know, projectile. Could have been avoided completely. here. You only have three projectiles on screen at once. So you either taper your shots, you fire slow, or you get up close and you fire fast. Or you just do like a burst of bullets and then you just wait. No reason to keep mashing.
Uh, Scarlet, you could at least tell me what the SimCity trading card game is. What platform is it on? What is it like? Do you enjoy it? Is it fun? I, I don't know. <laughs> I just have no idea what it is, so... <laughs> The only NES game you could think of besides Contra to have that thing where something is launched at you from the background to foreground. Uh, what part of Contra are you talking about? I don't remember that in the first Contra. There are some turrets later on in the first Contra, second to last level. They're not really in the background, they're still kind of in the foreground, just below you. In the ground, they shoot stuff up. I don't remember anything coming out from the background in the original Contra. Waterfall level does it in Contra, you think? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't really call that like. I mean, in Silius, like it's it's art artistically constructed to where it's clearly coming from like way in the distance in the background in the city. In Contra, it's a dude in the waterfall that you can kill. So I don't really count that as the same thing. You know what I mean? I mean, I guess we're kind of splitting hairs at that point, but in this game, it is it's totally like something all the way in the background that is meant to look tiny and coming from, you know, uh, a long distance. Brian. Yeah, Adventure Island, uh, Adventure Island 2 does have that. There are, like, volcanoes in the distance. They spew fireballs up and out. There's, like, mortar shards shots in the waterfall that you can't destroy. They kind of shoot up from the background. Uh, 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 are we talking NES country? I feel like maybe I'm just misremembering. But I thought those were just the dudes in the waterfall shooting them at you, and you could kill the dudes in the waterfall. There we go. I died. I remembered grenades coming from a forest in the background. Oh yeah, you're talking the grenades. I mean, they're still... Again, we're just like splitting hairs here. Like, Contra's an extremely flat game, whereas Silius, you know, artistically, it makes it look like it's got a bunch of different layers and there's like actual discernible distance in the background. Contra doesn't have anything like that. Like I said, it's a super flat game. And to me, they're just trees coming out, you know, grenades coming out from the trees. Like, I think we're talking about two totally different things here. Because Contra is so flat, I just think they're grenades coming out on basically the same layer. 
But in Journey to Celius, on the first level, you can see into the distance. You know, it's artistically drawn in a way where things in the background look a lot smaller than the foreground. And so you see a little projectile go off screen in the background, all the way, probably miles away. And then the projectile ends up on your layer. Like, that's what I'm talking about. And there's nothing like that in the first Contra, basically, on NES anyway. So the game is so flat, it's basically everything's just coming out from, like, seemingly the same layer. I already have a Let's Play of this, uh, Desan. And I, I don't want to compete with that guy. I've been doing this shit way longer than he has, and... Uh, I've also got a lot of, like, real-world stuff going on right now, which... is gonna keep me from doing, you know, more dedicated content like that. I really don't like looking at it as, like, competition. His channel's blown up! There's no way I can compete with that. Unless you guys want to start, like, sharing all my videos and, like, having, you know, potentially let allowing my channel to blow up, there's just no point in me even, like, comparing myself to him. You know, he's probably, what, got close to 100,000 subscribers already, all his videos blow up. Like, there's, it, it's, there's no point in comparing. Like, my best Let's Play got, like, a thousand, you know in the first week or whatever, and that's just pathetic compared to his. He gets like 50,000. He's already got it on lockdown. I can't do anything about it at this point, so... Yeah, and I, I really don't, I mean, I understand, like, you know, uh, a lot of you guys like that channel, but it's always kind of like, uh... <laughs> like a nut punch when, like, when people do bring it up, because, like, you know, I have been doing this for a long time, and people are like, Oh, you gotta do this before he does it! It's like... Why? He's already got it on lockdown. It doesn't, like... I, I'm not gonna get super competitive about, like, trying to make content because someone else, you know, is thinking about it or something like that. Someone that's much, much bigger than me already. That's been doing it for way less time. I just don't even want to think about it, you know? So. Ah. Let's go ahead and continue. It's fine. Yeah, and I, I've, I've just kind of haphazardly checked out some of his videos because out of nowhere one day, like, it started- his- his video started getting recommended to me. It's YouTube's algorithm and, you know, at work, I guess. And I was like, you know, this dude, he's got, like, tons of views and subscribers already, and he does something very similar. Um... And, uh... I was like, yeah, I- I, I see why people like this, you know? It's cool. So... It's not really my cup of tea, because I don't really watch playthrough videos. They're not my sort of thing on YouTube. I prefer more like, uh... When it comes to my YouTube viewing, I, I, I watch a lot of tech channels, and I, I watch uh, a couple of review channels. Not many. It's not a huge thing. And then just some, like, general commentary channels for various things. Not necessarily, like, all gaming related. But, like, video game playthrough channels, I just do not subscribe to them unless they're, like, friends of mine. Like, there's a long play channel or two that I, I subscribe to just because they're friends, you know? And I don't really watch much of their content. I'll pop in if there's some random game I've never heard of before. Maybe watch, like, a few minutes and that's it, but... Yeah. But yeah, he just, his stuff got recommended to me one day and I just, you know, popped in and was like, hmm, okay. Just comparing his stuff to my own. And the You Can Beat Games channel, you know, it's... He, he, puts a, he puts a lot more effort into his videos, I think. I'm not gonna say mine are better in any way, really. And the big difference is that I do mine live. Uh, so mine's an actual live, like, walkthrough. Whereas his are basically scripted videos. Um, which work well, you know? And he goes into all the history and stuff like that about a game in the beginning, which is really interesting to people. There's a lot of people in retro gaming that are all about that history. 
They kind of thrive off of that. As opposed to actually playing the damn games, they it's just all about the history to them. Which, you know, whatever floats your boat. I, I kind of used to go down that path for a while. Long time ago. This is like pre-YouTube. Um, but I found as I've gotten older, I've started to care less and less about the overall history. I mean, some of it's still really interesting to me. I have to just be in the mood for it. I don't, I don't eat, sleep, and drink, you know, gaming history anymore like I used to. But yeah, he does the uh, the gaming history stuff at like the very beginning of the videos, and it's, you know, a lot of people are, they want to see stuff like that, and I don't really do that much, you know? Because, you know, my channel is gameplay and talk. I'm, I've really tried over the years to veer away from the historical aspects of games, as well as, uh, you know, my opinions on the games. So basically, like, the historical focus and the review focus that my channel used to have. And we're, we're going way back. You know, some of you guys are, have only been subscribed for a year or two or even just a couple months. Uh, so you won't know kind of like what my channel used to be like in terms of stuff like that. But I've, I've, I've kind of like, um, I've kind of like locked in uh, or, um, sorry. I'm trying to survive here and I'm doing a really bad job of it. Um, I've kind of focused in, like, completely on the gameplay aspects. Yeah, we talk about, like, uh, you know, opinions and stuff like that here and there on the live streams, because sometimes people want to hear my opinion, but it's not the focus of things anymore. Nor is, like, the historical aspect. That's actually good insight for some of you guys, because some of you guys I watch are very into the historical parts of, you know, the video game industry. And when you get all excited about the histor historical stuff, and I don't, that's why. It's because I'm just not that into it anymore. <laughs> I have to be in the right mood for it. And then there's the dog with headphones. This is true, Dasan. This is very true. Um... Society says, uh, you can tell that I'm more well-read, video games-wise, compared to him. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I've been focusing on the gameplay for such a long time, and, you know, um, that, that, that's definitely more my specialty, and I do feel like I'm more of, when it comes to the, the action games, I'm definitely more of like a jack-of-all-trades, where I, I can jump into a game and do decently at it without having to put a ton of effort in. But, unless I'm doing variety streams like these, you know, you guys a lot of times don't get to see that. Some people do on, say, Twitch. Don't follow me on Twitch, by the way. <laughs> Twitch is my I don't give two craps platform. Um, all right, so this is actually not too hard to deal with. Uh, a lot of the bosses in Silius, by the way, it's just like the same simple patterns just repeated over and over and you just have to have patience. So let's actually switch over to Laser Gun. Oh wow, that ammo runs out real fast. Jeez. Alright, just use my handgun. And, oh, I'm not dead yet. My fault. And he was explaining Jason's AI in the Friday the 13th. Yeah, uh, that's... See, that's a really good game for something like that, too. Because... 
Um, you know, I, I seemingly can't play this game and talk at the same time right now as I try to <laughs> get my thoughts together. So we're gonna we're gonna switch games, and uh, we'll go with something a little more familiar. I tend to play once every now and then on stream. Uh, let's see. Actually, have I done? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Some of these games I've played a lot on stream before. Other games I, I have not. And I, you know, I've done so many variety streams now over the years that like I don't even remember what I've done frequently and what I have not. We'll roll through this. This will be a little bit easier for me while I get thoughts together and play. <laughs> Brandon says, I've got no idea how well you, you play as well as you do while talking. Well, it's because I've been doing it a long time, Brandon. Like, I started my channel in 2009, and it's always been about talking and playing at the same time. And trust me, it, it, it took years and years for me to get it down. There was, there was a period where I was just doing gameplay recorded, and then I'd add commentary on top. Those were my long play videos. And then... Um, out of, like, you know, 2011, 2013, I wanted to do more talking plays at the same time. That's how my Let's Plays came around. And, um, yeah, it's, it's literally just a skill you build. And also remember that, like, when I do Let's Play videos, sometimes it's like the 5th, 6th, or 7th, or 15th recording. Uh, I do not get them on the first try most of the times. I have to be, like, really, like, well-practiced. Um... Some of these more recent NES Let's Plays have been pretty easy for me to do. Uh, I didn't have to, like, re-record them many times because, like, you know, they're short and it's, you know, it's easy to practice them back to back. Um... Scarlet says uh, they pre prefer the uh, hangout type of atmosphere of a channel like this. Even the non-live videos, it's like sitting down and listening to a friend concisely explain a game while watching them play. Yeah, I've gotten that comment before too. Yeah. That's a preferential thing, it seems. Like, some people like like a certain vibe with their gameplay videos, so... Aberdeen asks, any chance of seeing Bionic Commando today? Uh... I don't know, Aberdeen. I'm going to say no. I don't trust Capcom much these days with certain games that I haven't covered before. So I'm going to actually probably not do Bionic Commando. I might do some other games that I've done before, like maybe we'll fire up a Mega Man or something. But I've gotten some copyright claims from Capcom games recently, and I feel like Bionic Commando is one of those where it's like, I don't know. I'd have to do a gameplay video of it somewhere else before I stream it here randomly, but... I do want to try to beat that game one day. I've never actually finished Bionic Commando. <laughs> P6 says, Have no regrets, you still rock! Yeah, I mean, it's, uh... You're right, you shouldn't have many regrets, but, you know, when you when you spend the amount of time working on a channel like this that I have, you do want to see it grow more, like, um... And faster and, you know, reach a wider audience and that sort of thing. And so, like, these new guys come onto the scene and, you know, even though I've tried to improve my dedicated Let's Play content, it's like they just blow up and my videos are still doing, like, very similar numbers to what I was doing before I, I was really involved with lots of editing and stuff like that during the Let's Plays. Um, so, you know, it's... It's, uh... It could be, uh... It could be easy to get a little disenchanted, you know, when you see other channels just kind of like blow up and yours is just still stagnant after all the work you've put into it. So, yeah, it's very easy to get, uh, yeah, disenchanted with the whole thing. And Ask Me says, so much of YouTube's success is either about going viral or writing the coattails of a bigger channel by doing collabs. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you, you, know, you know what's funny, you know, this is a topic not really a lot of people want to hear, but it kind of gives an insight to, to, like, sort of, you know, what I deal with, uh, like, on a day-to-day -day basis with YouTube. Like, October, I streamed, I think, like, three or four times a week. It was pretty grueling, and, you know, 
the first two weeks of October, I still had a job and then I got laid off halfway to and I'm dealing with all like, you know, resume writing and job searching and all that BS. And so my mind isn't there really there with it. And I, I saw a subscriber increase during October because my watch time increased a lot because I was streaming three or four times a week. Um, you know, revenue went up because again, streaming way more and there's more potential for, for people to view ads, which I don't really care much about. Um, and, you know, the big thing was like I saw a, a not really a huge jump like for normal channels, but for my channel, like it was a big jump in subscriber growth. And it was because like I, you know, had more watch time and YouTube recognized that. So they started recommending my videos to more people and more people jumped in randomly and blah, blah, blah. But since October has been over, I haven't been streaming much and I've only been posting regular videos and that subscriber growth just like tanked like almost overnight because now my watch time's not as high and now YouTube's not recommending my videos as much because it's like I'm not doing enough for YouTube to warrant the recommendations, you know? They it, like it's basically the higher your numbers are, uh, the more likely you get recommended to other people uh, and the more likely you see channel growth. And um, and it's like I basically have to grind out the system if I want to see meaningful channel growth and it's really really frustrating. You know, I can't just rely on putting out a couple of really high quality Let's Plays, you know, like once or twice a month or something like that. Like it's, it doesn't lead to channel growth unless for some reason a video goes viral. But you know, if a video like that hasn't gone viral yet, like why is it going to out of nowhere, right? It's probably not. Um, and so it's, it's a very frustrating kind of platform to be a creator on, but you can't really do anything about it. I mean, this is very niche content. There's nowhere else to post it. <laughs> There's not really anywhere else like this um, with a really big retro scene and whatnot. Uh, and, and, you know, with with uh, a, a platform of viewers that actually, you know, care about that kind of content. So it's just you're kind of stuck. And uh, that's that's where I am right now with that stuff. So, um, all right, I want to kind of stop complaining about YouTube, <laughs> but it's good to vent every now and then get it off my chest. Um, yeah, well, that's the other thing too, Brandon. There's video creation and then there's streaming. To me, they're two separate things. And, uh, you know, for a long time, I said I never wanted to stream on YouTube. And then one day through various circumstances, I decided to try it. And now since then, you know, it's been about five years now since I've been streaming on YouTube. Um, it's become like a regular thing on my channel. And even like one of the primary things, depending on whether I've got content actually up my sleeve and, and created and ready to go. Um, so, you know, it's definitely like a main part of my channel. And I think it's actually attributed to my, my growth. Like if I, if I just kept doing dedicated Let's Plays, I don't know if I would have even broke like the 10,000 subscriber milestone, right? Um, like a lot of it I think has come from, from live streaming. Um, but it's like, you know, I, I don't want to be one of those like full time streamers. Like I, I liked kind of what I was doing with streaming where it's like I would stream every week or every other week, same time, same place. And I was able to practice for games. But YouTube doesn't like that. You know, you don't get the watch time. And so you don't get recommended. And so now I just crap out streams left and right, you know, because, you know, to, to appease the uh, YouTube algorithm gods. Uh, <laughs> damn, now that I'm verbalizing all this stuff, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I should just stop making videos completely. <laughs> you know, uh, there's no hope. There's no hope. Just quit. Quit while you're ahead. Where you're not even ahead anymore. Just, just quit. <laughs> Anxiety plus burnout equals channel coma. Yeah, a little bit. So... And I agree, Bur Game Eagle. Burnout is a cruel thing on YouTube. And it's, it's very real. Um, you know, don't do things you're passionate about. Do things because, you know, that's the only way to stay afloat. And for me, like, I, I, I've come to the realization that, for one, I should probably start actually playing this game. But I've come to the realization, uh, a long time ago, actually, that, like, I'll never be able to make this even close to a full-time thing. You know, you guys have been extremely generous with donations and stuff like that, which absolutely helps it uh, be a part-time thing. But anything even remotely resembling, you know, full-time work here is just, it's just never going to happen, you know, so. Or if it does, I'll be like 80, and it won't even matter by that point. 
Unless there's like a new creator, like retro creator boom then, where it's like, I'm an old geezer who's still alive and still remembers the Atari 2600. Let's talk about that. Gotta need to take my meds first, but how you guys watching know about those meds? Cause <laughs> I only get old people watching me. Really interested 20 somethings because they just want to know what old age is like, and that'll be like the future of my channel, I bet. If I'm still alive by then. Maybe that's when I'll, I'll find real success. <laughs> Alright, I don't even know where I'm going with this now. <sighs> Alright, uh, I hope this times out because I really do not want the uh, machine gun. There we go, it does. But yeah, Super C, great game on NES. Great game. See, this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, Scarlet. You know, this is like the grenades coming out in the first Contra. Same thing here. You'll notice, like, there's not really anything coming out from behind the mountains. It's just, there's just like a little bunker there, and they're just throwing grenades out of it. So, when you were asking about your things coming out from the background example, like, I don't really think of things like that, you know. I was thinking, you know, something that's like truly in the distance. So... Yeah, really awesome game. This has always been one of my favorites on NES. It's got great graphics, great music, awesome gameplay. Doesn't slow down too much. Hey Andy, welcome back. And John Evan Bear. That's a good idea for a channel name, the Geriatric Gamer. <laughs> And you know what? You mentioned that, uh, Spike. Like, I actually, you know, I don't know if I really want to do it, but one idea would be to, uh, actually do, like, a... Like a Let's Play Light, or like a Let's Play... Let's say a Let's Play Recap, where instead of watching the entire video, I just take snippets of things I think that would be important, and then, uh you know, kind of just like, you know, compile those into their own, like, dedicated little video. I don't know how well that would work. It's something I could try. I don't know how interested people would be in, in watching something like that, if it would even be worth, like, the time. Oh, there. Those things actually kill everything on screen. I don't usually go for them unless they're right next to me. Yeah, we got the, uh, the good old spread shot. Try to hold on to the spread shot. By far the best weapon in the game, same with the first Contra. I'd say the second best weapon in this version is the fire weapon. It's, uh, they heavily improved it in this game. Unlike the arcade version of this, there is no, um, there is no bomb. You get bombs in the top-down stages of the arcade game. But not this. Yeah, you know, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, I do have, I mean, I'm on... When it comes to Let's Plays, I'm on like 400-something right now. Uh, granted, <laughs> my Let's Plays have not always been of the same kind of quality over the years, trust me. A lot of early Let's Plays in particular, where it's just me firing up a game randomly. Yeah, that's just like my channel evolving over the years. And, uh, and sort of changing. There was a, there was a certain point where, like, I, I started to realize, like, man, if I'm gonna do this, I really need to, like, really know the games and... Um, try to get my videos to have some sort of inherent value, you know, outside of just like, oh, <laughs> watch this guy die over and over. Like, so it's when I started really just kind of like honing in on like the whole, you know, gameplay aspect of my videos. Because also watching a lot of people play these games for the first time, I realized that like, um, a lot of people just don't even have, like, simple... They don't have, like, the core... ...disciplines down, like... 
you know? It's okay to just stop holding right. <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, it's okay to not mash the button as fast as you can. It's okay to not wear out your thumbs. Boom. Woo! See, I, I actually got cocky there. But my spread shot killed most of those enemies in one hit. I didn't have to mash the button to kill those guys, right? Um, so being able to, like, explain mechanics like that to people, it kind of, like, opens up people's eyes. We're like, oh, I can actually, you know, think about what I'm doing when I'm playing these games, and all of a sudden they become more enjoyable. I can actually get farther without using the Konami code! What a concept. Um... So yeah, but for the longest time, like that was a, that was a good step up in like. Oops, see, that was dumb on my part. I knew that was gonna happen, and that's where practice comes into play. You have to kind of learn how bosses work. And I haven't played this game in a while, so I have an excuse. Um, but I really feel like earlier this year, like you know, we had a we had really good improvement with like, like I decided like you know I need I need to. I want to keep doing this, I need to, like, step up the quality of my content. Like, for the longest time, I just did Let's Plays with zero camera, zero editing, um, outside of, like, a basic fade in, fade out at the end. But, you know, I thought, you know, we really need to, like, boost the quality of that content. And that's where I came up with the idea of, like, you know, little overlays and stuff like that as I talk about things in-game. As well as, you know, the intro and outro. I actually had a bunch of people request an, a new intro, because they missed the old intro I used to have. But when I had an intro, people complained it was like, Oh, I don't want an intro. It takes too long to get to the video. So I just chopped it out. I was like, you know what? You're right. But then I had a lot of people be like, I love the intro. And so that's why we have intros now on our, our new Let's Play videos. Even tiny intros on the, uh, you know, Can We Beat This videos. You know, the weird controller videos. Society says, well, time to go buy more booze. Nice. <laughs> John Evans says he's been playing, replaying Order of Ecclesia lately. Great game. Yeah, Order of Ecclesia is awesome. It's one of my favorite Castlevania games. That's another thing for me too, John Evans, as I've, I've been playing a lot more pinball lately too. Been playing in our one of our local leagues. Uh, been going to the brewery and playing a lot more. Playing more tournaments and stuff like that. Which uh, also takes away time from stuff like YouTube. Pinball involves lots of socializing, and that's another thing. It's like I need to get out and actually like talk to people, and hang out with people, and, you know, have a life outside of. Uh, <laughs> the lonely life of making gaming videos. <clears throat> Being a uh, gaming video creator also kind of has like this negative stigma, I think, attached to it. You know, in in uh, in person gaming scenes. I'm always one of those types of people, too, where, like, you know, if I go to, like, a gaming convention or something, I just keep them myself. I'm not like, hey, man, I got a YouTube channel. Um, just kind of try to treat the hobby out in public just like it's this normal thing. Because it has always been a normal thing for me. I, you know. I told you guys many times, gaming has always been, like, my number one hobby. Period. Uh, there is not a Game Boy version of Super C. There is uh, a game called Operation C. It's a, it's a, its own game. You know, you have some similar level designs, um, but no, it's 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 all new levels and uh, yeah. They do reuse some of the old music, which is nice. Um, now there is a port of uh, Contra Three for Game Boy. The Alien Wars, which I've also got a Let's Play of. <laughs> Completely forgot I did a Let's Play of that many years ago. But yeah, I've got one. But yeah, Operation C is not a port of Super C, it's its own game. And definitely worth playing, it's a, it's a really solid game. Oh, 
Oh, well, thanks a lot, Spike Balls. I appreciate that. <laughs> Oh yeah, Double Dragon on Game Boy, it's a solid conversion. Yeah, very solid little game. I've tried to Let's Play that multiple times, but I, uh, I always am very inconsistent at it. I have to, uh... I have to go back and try to, like, relearn it, learn the strategies. I had it back in the late 90s, when Game Boy games were like a dime a dozen. And, uh... I remember getting through it pretty consistently back then, but I can't seem to do it now, so... I've got to, uh, you know, figure out the sh like the right strategies to get through consistently. I mean, especially if I'm going to explain the game in like a, a walkthrough or something. That's the other thing about my let's plays is like I won't do a let's play of a game now unless like I'm I'm super comfortable with it. Because as as a player, I have to be able to explain it well and execute on what I'm explaining. I can't just, you know, explain something and then fail over and over. It's, uh, you know. I have to be able to demonstrate what I'm talking about, basically. So if I'm too inconsistent at a game, you guys just won't see me play through it. I might play it on like a variety stream, like today. Like we just messed around with Godzilla 2. No way in hell I'm let's play in that game. So... John says, Battletoads on Game Boy, the Snake Tunnel. Are you talking the port of the first Battletoads? Ooh, that was close. That's not actually the first Battletoads on Game Boy. There's, um... There was a unique Game Boy-only Battletoads game. Which was actually pretty good for what it was. Extremely difficult, though. Just called Battletoads. And then Battletoads in Ragnarok's world is the port of the NES game, which came out a year or two later. The sun is back. Oh, that was P6. Oh, it's because he's got the same color as you. You guys need to use some, like, unique uh, thumbnails, guys. So I don't get confused like that. <laughs> hey, Jeff Smith was in here earlier, and he's always got, like, a, a crazy sense of humor. But it was like, it's been extra crazy lately. And I thought maybe, like, it was someone using a duplicate account name, because it's just a generic first and last name. So I reached out to him on, on Facebook today. I was like, dude, is this you? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, alright, good, thanks. I just needed to verify. It wasn't some random troll or some, some guy that just has, has a really wacky sense of humor as well. <laughs> but the problem with, like, just not having any sort of thumbnail is that like, YouTube just assigns these colors, and and so I'll just see the color by someone's name, and then I'll, I'll get it confused for another chatter, because I'm just, like, quickly glancing down. Um, I'm not, like, stopping the gameplay. Quickly glancing down at chat, and, uh... So change your damn thumbnails, guys. Make it easier on the streamer, please. <laughs> One thing I hate, though, is, like, people using the same thumbnails from, like, some kind of popular, like, property. And I'll basically associate, like, a, a thumbnail uh, profile picture to a specific individual, and then someone else will pop in with the same damn picture. I'm like, oh, it's this person, and then I, I read their name, and I'm like, oh, it's not that person. But now we have, like, people with duplicate uh, thumbnails. <laughs> Is that you still out there, Jeff? You gotta be kidding me, dude. Seriously? <laughs> uh, Game Eagle says, man, his internet sucks. 
try try lowering the uh, the resolution. It actually doesn't hurt NES games that badly. All right, Jeff, if that was you, you have to message me on Facebook again. <laughs> this is how desensitized I am to people being like, yeah, I'm this person. Like, are you? <laughs> are you actually this person? Um, how do I know? Okay, Jeff just messaged me. <laughs> See, this is the kind of crap I have to deal with as a streamer, guys. <laughs> you still haven't asked me about my worms. I'm not gonna ask you about your worms, man. <laughs> I don't want to know about your worms. <laughs> so, ask me about my worms is Jeffrey Smith. <laughs> he wants you guys to ask him about his worms. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask him. Alright, I don't actually want the laser. <laughs> I'm not asking you about your words, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, one thing you can do is actually just sit up top here shoot down diagonally. Alright, boss time! Kind of ripping right through this game. I did die a few times, but it's okay. Not a big deal. Whoops. Better strategy is probably to just like kind of taper your shot here and there. So you can hit all three of those projectiles. Just like that. Yeah, Jeff, you should, uh, you should, like, put a thumbnail of, like, some of those colorful worms that Sean just linked to. <laughs> oh, like, one of the worms' characters, yeah. This is our last level, actually. For those of you guys that have not seen this all the way through. For those of you guys that have not, you should play this game. Really good game. And it's not, uh, honestly, I don't find it to be that difficult. Honestly, I find it on the easy side. Of course, I could be saying that because I've been playing the game forever, but... Um, there, are, there are a couple of, like, surprise gotcha moments, like those big turrets I just destroyed. You know, if you don't know they're coming up, they shoot projectiles really fast, you're probably gonna get hit. But you just learn from those mistakes, and then uh, it's not too bad to go through.
Alright, now this thing uh, constantly just smashes down. You have to stop when you want to make the, uh, the bigger jumps. Like right here. And this is it. Final boss. Pretty easy final boss. You need to stay back though. Because you'll get killed as it raises up. Just get all the way back. <laughs> He's just, that sounds like a lot of commitment with this worm's name. <laughs> I'm gonna switch to a different one. <laughs> okay, I definitely know that's Jeff. <laughs> He's the only one I know that does the whole DiGiorno thing. Um, but now you gotta make, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta add a thumbnail, Jeff. It should be like a DiGiorno logo or something. It just makes it even better. <sighs> I mean, we're at, uh, three and a half hours in. Hours in, we are almost 7 p.m. my time. I haven't heard from anyone, so I don't think I'm actually, uh, I don't think I'm going anywhere tonight. I've been going to the brewery a lot and playing lots of pinball, but that, that. <laughs> That adds up real fast financially. Uh, so let's go ahead and switch games. I wouldn't mind getting out because uh, I've been in my apartment the last two days. But uh, we will play something else instead. All right, see you, John Evan. Not a lot of S games tonight, <laughs> without even realizing it. Mega Man's not a bad idea. People like Mega Man. I like Mega Man. Um, you know what I'm gonna do is one that... I'll do one I haven't done in a while. Well, technically I did this, I think, a little bit last week on Twitch. We will do it here too. Uh, Dishonesty Associated Beers. The pinball itself doesn't cost me much because I'm really good at the game and I earn lots of free games. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the beer that adds up. And at breweries, you're not going to get like, you know, $3 happy hour beers. You know, everything is like five or six bucks at a minimum, usually seven or eight, depending on like, you know, the higher quality drinks. You get three or four, and you're looking at a $20 plus tab, and you gotta tip the people, and then... Uh, yeah. We are playing NES games, guys. We're not playing TurboGrafx-16 games. Start. This doesn't really matter. 
It's all good. Yeah, no, I just wanted to play Mega Man 5 because I actually recently bought the cartridge. It was the last one I needed for my collection. And it's never really been my favorite in the series, but uh, I was having a good time with it last week when I was playing it. You know, I got through, like, the first eight Robot Masters on my own, and, you know, I was having a good time. I do find it's a little more interesting if you try to go through it quicker. And, you know, if you stop and try to kill every enemy, it's not nearly as fun. Because there are a lot of enemies that just, like, block your shots and stuff like that. Uh, and you kind of have to just wait for them. Oh, I have to hit him in the face? That's garbage. Yeah, I mean, I've got my favorites on the system in terms of Mega Man. Mega Man is kind of like... I've come to realize over the years, it's like the Castlevania series in general. I mean, NES Mega Man games are kind of like the Castlevania series as a whole. Like, to me, even like a bad Castlevania is still better than most games. <laughs> um, so, even my least favorite Mega Mans are... Well, on NES anyway. Yeah, still, still good solid games. Got it. It's easy to mess that up. Or like a bad pizza, it's still good. Yeah. Dude, I had some Stouffer's French bread pizzas last week. I burned the hell out of them. And, uh, they were still good. <laughs> uh, they're still tasty. I hate overburning my pizza. Overcooking. sucks about getting hit ugh, is you lose your charge. That was the thing I think they introduced in part 5. I think in part 4 you could still charge if you took a hit. Ugh. So like, you know, you take a random hit like that, it's it really slows down the, the pacing of the fights. There we go. Still got it. sort of like a channel meme for a long time about, like, my disdain for Mega Man 5. I've kind of, like, come back around on it as the years have gone on. Again, as my channel has kind of veered away from bitching and whining, um, I've stopped, like, having, like, personal grudges against games like these because I realize they're kind of pointless. Really no, no point in, like, <laughs> perpetually pissed off uh, at a game's quality. Or lack of potential. Or I should I should say lack of realization of potential. I think that was always my biggest beef with this game, is that it just always felt like uh, there are a lot of things they could have done better with it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's still a fun game. <laughs> I think it's easier to have that kind of mindset when you've played some actually, like, kind of bad games and have even enjoyed those as well. You go back and you play something like Mega Man 5 and it's, like, pure gold. You know, learn Super Pitfall, 
And any complaints you will have had with Mega Man 5 will be like a drop in the bucket. It won't even matter. I think it's a part of it too. Learn how to beat Karate Kid, then go back to Mega Man 5. It would be like the best game ever made in comparison. charge up all the way. I remember one of the other things I didn't like about this game is, like, the more, uh, pastel-style colors. Yeah, it doesn't really bother me that much now, but that was always a sticking point a long time ago. Yeah, uh, well, Karate Kid is my latest Let's Play, for anyone that missed it. I posted it yesterday, so if you want to kind of, like, see your way through that game, that is there for you. But yeah, that hurricane stage is uh, very, very tedious. Very easy to, to get knocked back and just die instantly. Karate Kid is definitely not impossible. <laughs> definitely not. You just gotta know what to do. Oh, you mean a Starman game. Gotcha. Yeah, I have no idea. I, I have never really followed the Mega Man uh, ROM hacking scene. Or fan game scene. I mean, not everything is necessarily a ROM hack. You know, there are, like, um, fan games, like, built from the ground up for a computer. Or computers. PC. That uh, train sound, it goes doo, reminds me of like one of the sound effects from Friday the 13th. I'm not releasing my charge at the right time, and so I keep getting hit. Switch over to Rush. That's actually not what I wanted. But it'll work. It'll still work. There we go. Ah. Thought I could still shoot first, but I wasn't able to. charges across the screen, uh, you can't actually hit him. He just reflex all your shots. Yeah, 
It really sucks being cornered too and you get hit by those things. You can't do anything about it. And I guess I could try to jump over him? No, not working. All right, I don't need to charge up. All right, got him. Your computer just skipped the rest of the level. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess it's probably just buffered. <sighs> That's a bummer. Man, now I want a DiGiorno. Jeff's mission is complete. That actually reminds me, I did a uh, Mega Man Game Gear Let's Play a couple years ago. Back when I had my Mega SG. And this level is one of the levels in that. It's kind of an interesting version of Mega Man. Okay, we got these secrets here. Where we get the G. If you spell Mega Man 5, you get beat. Like, it's totally more interesting if you just walk past the enemies, get some close calls. Hey, Bossenberg. Actually, an energy tank towards the end here. Jump over? Oh, wow, that's a huge hitbox. You can't even jump over that. That, yep. Pretty easy. Mega Man 2 is just, <laughs> you try to give Dr. Wily a bath. <laughs> Never thought about it like that. It's a lot of extra lives. Uh, I actually wonder if I can... I've tried this before. Whee! And I can just use this. I never thought about trying that before. <laughs> Normally you'd have to go back and respawn the uh, those platforms. Remember Stone Man in uh, the Game Gear Mega Man was like ridiculously difficult. It's 
one of the issues with that game is the bosses are like super fast. The core gameplay is actually really solid though. It feels just like a classic Mega Man. You know, all the standard Mega Man keyframes are there. Jeff, that's just messed up, man. Press Alt F4 for secret chat options. <laughs> yeah, what's sad is someone's probably gonna fall for it. Do not press Alt F4, guys, if you're on a PC. <laughs> uh, they're 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 much faster, Sean. Like, go check out some gameplay of the Game Gear Mega Man, you'll see what I'm talking about. Some of the bosses are, like, ridiculously difficult because of that. But yeah, they actually, they didn't do what they did on Mega Man on Game Boy, where it's like, you know, the arena fits the entire screen. Like, the arenas are still about the same size, they just scroll left and right. Which is good, I don't mind that. But it's like the boss movement that uh, that really sucks. It's not every boss, some bosses are way more manageable than others. Nothing happens to her body. Samus is secretly a cybernetic cat. There's not actually a human body inside that suit. check right now. Well, so let me go to my uh, item screen. If you wanted to use an E-Tank here, you actually can't. <laughs> See, that'll be even better. It's actually a hamster running in a hamster wheel the entire time. <laughs> that'd be great. my shot too early.
You think the troll works now, where less people use computers, maybe. That's actually a good point. I was thinking about that. I was like, man, so many people are on mobile devices. Maybe they'll go home and try Alt F4 when they get on an actual computer. And realize it just closes the, uh, the screen completely. Whatever screen you're active on, if you're just active on the desktop and you do it, it'll just ask you if you want to shut down or restart. Uh, D. Andrew, I just have more fun not using the weaknesses because I have to actually, like, dodge stuff and... <laughs> a lot of times when you use the weaknesses, you just annihilate the boss real fast and it's not that much fun to me. I mean, same goes for the levels themselves. I usually try to do the levels without using the weaknesses unless it's mandatory. Not really weaknesses, but, you know, the boss abilities. In the final stages of these games, typically, they, uh, you know, will make you use specific abilities. I really enjoy how this level looks, though. I think this is where, like, the pastel-style color actually works out really well. Because it gives you more of like a nice dusk looking background. So I just write my name in here, and, and Crystal Man uses their holistic healing techniques to regenerate health. Oh, man. You're kind of unlucky, Jeff, that I don't do chat embedding anymore. Otherwise, like, people watching this would, uh, would probably be laughing their asses off right now. I mean, I do still have the chat replay, but now people have the option to turn it off. tank up there, and I don't see it. That's weird. I wonder why I didn't spawn. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be an end tank. There's another letter down here. Boom, got it. Well, I mean, that's what's fun about these games, Spike Paul, is, is they give you all that flexibility. It's like, you don't have to play with the weapons. But you can, you know? I think more skilled players find it entertaining to try to do it without the weapons because uh, it's it feels more engaging. You know, there's a little more skill involved. I actually have to dodge these a lot as opposed to killing the boss in like three hits. <laughs> and that's fun to me, right? But, you know, for people that aren't just comfortable with the game, you know, and they just want to beat the game, they can use the sub-weapons. Or you can do like what Scarlet does, is sometimes use them and sometimes not. You know? They just give you a lot of flexibility, and that's one of the th things that makes Mega Man in general just, uh, you know, fun. It always kind of frustrates, frustrates me when you, like, you have to use a specific weapon on a specific boss, or, like, you know, they force you to play a certain way. But Mega Man, it's like, you play however you want. That's always been, like, one of the big appeals to the series for me. Think you can only have one M tank at a time. Oh, that... that's probably why. Okay. I probably already have one. I didn't even think about that. I thought it would still appear, but yeah. 
That makes that makes sense. Lawrence is on his PS5. I wish I had a PS5. Oh yeah, it's the one with all the gravity mechanics. I always forget about that. You reverse your controls, too, vertically. Do I know who Kitty Pink Rose is? No, I have no idea. No idea. to avoid those guys. I want to get past him without taking damage. Nice, still got it. Got it! My favorite Mega Man. Uh, I mean, no limitation on like the types of Mega Man games. I mean, probably be uh between Mega Man Two and Mega Man X Part One. Then runners up would be Mega Man X Four and Mega Man Three. Scarlet says, that's also why Shovel Knight was so good. You had freedom of playstyle and options. Yeah. I mean, Shovel Knight was clearly influenced by stuff like DuckTales and Mega Man, and it was all the better for it, you know? Hey, DJ, welcome back. Yeah, favorite questions are not my favorite, but I get it. I'll answer them every now and then. <laughs> But man, I, de I cannot stream a Castlevania game without somebody in the stream asking me what my favorite Castlevania game is. It's like, man, I've already answered this game, or answered this question a hundred times before. <laughs> I guess that's my only issue with it, and I'm glad people are enthusiastic about that stuff, but man, it gets old after a while. <laughs> and it's such an arbitrary question, too, like, it doesn't really matter what my favorite thing is. Um... Questions like that, I kind of wish, like, some people would just kind of save for Q&A sessions and stuff like that. <laughs> it's more interesting in that context. Because that's kind of like the purpose of a Q&A. But, yeah, it is what it is. It just seems to come with the territory. Those things will kill you instantly, so you definitely want to get rid of them. I'd recommend uh, waiting for the last one to spawn in. Another energy tank. The final levels are so demanding? Uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit. I'm glad they're demanding though, because like the core game itself is not that difficult. You know, a lot of most people I know <laughs> that have played have been able to get through it. Um, yeah, I gotta have that difficulty increase, otherwise it just kind of, like, loses its steam. <laughs> yeah, you don't even make content, Jeff, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because, like, you also you witness it as a viewer. And I've had people come into my streams and just ask question after question after question after question after question. After question. 
Um, and my viewers eventually pick up on that, and they're like, oh god, not the question guy. You know, they'll start complaining behind his back, and I don't want to, I don't want to foster that kind of environment, but some people are just, uh, they just, they don't see they're doing that. And, uh, you know, it doesn't just burn me out, but it burns everybody else out that's watching. Uh, Alright, we've got beat now. Go get him, man. Or not. You know, you could just target those those balls. <laughs> Alright, beat's not gonna do me too much good right now. Oh, I only have three energy tanks. Okay, for some reason I thought I had a lot more. Forgetting this is not Mega Man 3. Mega Man 3, man, by the end of the game, you'll be maxed out. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, you've been around long enough to where you've seen a whole lot of weird situations <laughs> while I'm streaming. save you from pits. Yeah, right? Yeah, Beat mainly just attacks in this one. Can he grab items for you? I feel like he can grab items for you, too, but it's not really functionality I, I ever use. I don't know, should I just go ahead and beat the game? <laughs> no pun intended. The problem with, like, these later Mega Man games on NES is they get so long. Well, I guess everything past Mega Man 2 is pretty long, now that I think about it. I mean, most of them have, like, either two sets of final levels or two castles. You know, in Mega Man 3, it's... Replay four levels again! Uh, and fight Mega Man 2 bosses. And in Mega Man 4 and on, it's like... It's always two castles. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Andrew. That's the thing. Is like I'd rather have questions that are more thought-provoking because it actually instigates like real, meaningful conversation. Whereas things like "What's your favorite game? What's your favorite color? What's your favorite food?" blah blah blah. It's just kind of like arbitrary stuff that doesn't, you know, further an interesting conversation. Like, that, that kind of conversation is the sort of conversation I'd have, like, with a co-worker when we're bored. Like, yeah, man, I'm gonna go out and get some pizza tonight. Man, it's, like, my, my favorite thing. Oh, yeah, man, me too. It's like, like, I don't want to stream and have that be, like, the crux of the conversations we have here. It's just not interesting to me. Hey, Jim, how's the weather today? Uh, it's good, man. It's cold, but, you know, I could deal with it. I got jackets. Like, <laughs> Like, I don't, like, I get enough of that, you know, in my daily life. I don't want that to be my YouTube life, and neither should you guys. As opposed to verbally recite a list of all the books in your shelf. Yeah, no thanks. I'm good. <laughs> I've had people be like, what games do you have in your collection? I'm like, uh... Way too many to name. So... <laughs> Again, it's just kind of like an arbitrary thing. Like, it doesn't really matter what I actually own. I mean, maybe it's fun to, like, you know, talk about my own personal collection here and there, but... Generally, it's like, yeah, I don't really feel it to be necessary.
Oh yeah, yeah, I, I hear that, Balsam Burf. And uh, you know what's funny? I've been seeing those pop up more frequently. Like we're reliving the MySpace days of social media now. <laughs> Those are days I kind of miss sometimes because of, like, the period of time in my life, but it wasn't because of the top ten lists. Like, I do not miss those at all. I remember right, these guys do a lot of damage if you touch them. Let's see. Yep, yeah, that's a lot of damage. Thankfully, this first one's pretty easy. Yeah, we basically fight these generic robots at the end of uh, these first few levels. Speaking of which, how's the job hunt going? Uh, oh, I talked about it last night. I'm gonna say not great. Um, I had three interviews. Uh, two of them went well, but I have not gotten any work yet. And I was politely declined from one of my interviews that went well last week. Or actually a Monday of this past week. So that kind of like got me into a funky mood. Because I really wanted to get picked up by that place. So the interview went really well. And I thought I would have been a good fit, but... Uh, the first place I interviewed for... Um, the manager actually reached out to me yesterday. And we had a conversation. He wants to bring me on. But it's for the old company I used to work at. And so they're going to be some more, like, I don't know, potential stipulations involved, and, um, it's more like government stuff again, and government can drag their feet a lot, um, I, I, I don't know, uh, I might get it? I mean, it sounds like he wants to bring me on, he said he's gonna reach out to, like, HR and stuff, and we'll hopefully have something back by Monday, so, I mean, I might? I, I might have a job, but it's not like I've been reached out to by a recruiter with an offer letter yet, so it's still completely up in the air. So I'm not getting my hopes up, really. Um, yeah, and like, getting declined from the other job kind of put me in a funk, and I just kind of stopped looking. This week, I just, just took time off, so, you know. Even if I get this other job, I have to, uh, still have to start looking, for, you know, for other places and submit my resume just as, like, a backup plan, I guess. I mean, I'm doing okay financially, but, um, you know, that whatever money I do have is eventually going to run out, so I, I have to find something. But that's kind of the status of it right now. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I work in a sector of IT, yeah. And in my sector, people... They want people that are, like, really technical and, uh... I don't know. It's there's a lot of competition and it's it's tough to actually get hired on because I think some managers are like um, kind of like over demanding qualifications. Job hunting is a slow decline from great to ugh. Yeah, dude, it, job hunting sucks. I haven't had to do it in such a long time. I mean, it's probably been about 15 years now since I've had the job hunt. No joke. And actually, you know what? Like, I didn't even really job hunt back then, because, like, most of the jobs I, I kind of uh, got 
I just kind of fell into. You know, I didn't really have to reach out to actually search. Like, this is the first time I've actually had to legitimately, like, put a resume together, uh, make sure it's up to date, reach out to all these companies, submit the resume, go through all their forms, and, you know, HR hoops to jump through. It's been a really aggravating experience, and then going through the interview process is a pain as well. Especially when you bomb an interview, and you, you know you bombed it, like, ugh. Horrible experience. Five is a really good looking game at, at points. I think this castle level looks pretty detailed. Which is good. Yeah, switch back. Uh oh, that's not good. <laughs> I wasn't fast enough. I knew that was going to happen. You're a database admin. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I've, I've known people uh, that have done that work. Yeah. And the thing is, it's like, you know, it's administration work, but there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, technical aspects of that job. Um, and so when you get interviewed, like, you know, people want to know your skills and they're going to grill you on... Um, you know, all the tools you use and stuff like that. And uh, if you're like me in particular, and it's like you've been out of work for a month, someone was like, well, how do I use... How do, what would you do uh, in Splunk? In this situation, I'm like, uh, well, I mean, I haven't used it in a month. <laughs> so I'm trying to remember all this stuff off the top of my head. I had to, like, look up, uh, tutorial videos just to get a refresher. It's because, like, I, you know, unless you're doing it all the time or on a daily basis, you start to forget things, and, uh... So you have to be, like, extra prepared on interviews as well, because, you know, if you're, if you've... It's, I guess it's one thing if you're looking while you're still on the job and you're still doing, but if you're, you get laid off and you don't have access to the tools anymore, it's like, oh shit, I, um, uh, hmm, let me think for a second, can you give me a minute? <laughs> it's like, uh... But that's what I really liked about one interview I had. Um, they were grilling me on a bunch of stuff, but they were like, it's okay to give... I'd search for it on Google as an answer. Because that's what everyone does, right? You're expected to be able to go and find the answer for yourself if you don't know the answer. And I feel like that's, that's realistic. Gunman! Your mind pretty much purges all the technical stuff you do once you leave the office. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Society says he's learned that work environment is worth a lot. If the environment sucks, you can pay me enough. You can't pay me enough. Making half of what he did 15 years ago, but he's never been happier. Yeah, it's another reason why I got bummed out by that other position, because it seemed like really good staff and, like, down-to-earth people. Well, if I get rehired by the old company that let me go, I'd act at least be working with someone that I know, that I've already worked with, and so that's cool. But we'll see what happens.
Every job wants a different language. Yeah. DJ agrees with society. V chill, welcome. Says I never played Mega Man 4, 5, or 6 after 3. He got an SNES and went on to Mega Man X. Yeah, these are uh these are great games. Um definitely recommend trying them eventually if you like the uh, original Mega Man's. So much slowdown. Oh man. Some of these bosses would just buster only or a little more difficult. DJ says you'll probably be on the job hunt uh, after the new year. Just because you're looking for a different place, DJ? Or do you think there's going to be like a layoff or something? Bad mistakes here on this guy. It's not that hard, I'd say. You've got to be patient. Like, I think it's better to just charge up, wait for his shields to go off screen, and then you're good. Yeah. That's kind of how, how you go about it. You agree with society as well, but pay will directly relate to the amount of BS you put up with. Oh, yeah, totally. I totally agree with that. You also need to make money to survive, you know, like for me, cost of living is very high in this area. So a salary increase is extremely important as well, going from job to job. And I've been at the same job for such a long time, my salary didn't really increase that much. So like cost of living was rising, but my salary was not. And uh, so it became increasingly more difficult to make ends meet as someone that is a uh, single male who only lives with a cat. Uh, I don't have anybody else, you know, offloading, uh, to offload my rent to. So, so, yeah, getting a salary increase is also very important. <laughs> Later, Austin ends up doing IT work for Dr. Wiley. Your employer has federal contracts and are saying January 4th is a bunch of rules get implemented by OSHA in regards to vaccination mandates, wearing masks again, and other stuff. Oh, okay. Are you just like against that stuff? Are you not vaccinated or whatever? Um, I mean, I personally don't have a problem with that stuff, but yeah, to each their own, you know? Everyone's different. Oh! That would have hurt if I was Mega Man. <laughs> Make that cat pay up, I wish, right? All right, Patrulli, you gotta sell me more mugs. We, we gotta sell more mugs with your face on them now. <laughs> oh my god, man. All right, well, this is basically the last set of levels. I might as well just finish this out. Yeah, I'm in, you know, what I was doing with the previous company is government contracting, and one of the interesting things about being open for work again is that, like, you know, you know, some of these companies, they're just public sector. They don't do anything with the government, which would have been interesting to go into, because then they don't have, like, mask mandates and stuff. If you do anything government, it is, uh, yeah, they've, they've implemented that rule that's going into effect, I think late December or something. Maybe in early December. Or maybe it's already gone into effect? Where you basically, you know, you have to wear a mask and you have to be vaccinated. Um, yeah, it's mandatory. Kind of controversial. Again, I don't, I don't mind it. I don't want to go get into, like, 
political conversation, but it doesn't bother me, but yeah, it does bother some other people, and uh, yeah, that's going to affect whether they'll be qualified to work in that area. Oh man, I completely missed that. I want to get this jump. Let's see, can I get it? Yeah, we got it. I know I've done it before. I'm getting so hungry again, too. I've been streaming for four hours. I had Subway about an hour and a half before I uh, started the stream. Yeah, if we keep the stream going, I'm probably going to have to take, like, a food break. This level design is basically like rehash of parts of Mega Man 4. says, I cannot sign up for being a guinea pig and endless shots. And here in Iowa, masks are basically not a thing, so it seems crazy to all of a sudden have to wear them when no one really cares. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hear that, man. Here in our area, you know, we're highly populated, so when you go out to the grocery stores, it's like everyone's masked up. To the point where, like, I feel weird not having a mask. Um, like, if you're in, in the middle of nowhere and, like, they're forcing that stuff, it, yeah, it does, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But that's the thing about, like, federal rules, right? Is it's, it's for the entire nation. It's like it's not up to the state. <laughs> Or if the state makes its own exception or something, like, the federal government can still come in and, like, smack them down. It, it's, it kind of sucks. I mean, that's how it is with certain, uh... uh plant-based substances that people like to ingest. <laughs> via pipes and, uh, wraps and whatever, and sometimes even cookies. You know, a lot of states are making that either decriminalized or even legal, yet it's still not legal on the federal level. So... You know, if someone, like, tries to run, like, a marijuana dispensary, like, you know, you know, in their state, they can, you know, the state's okay with it, but the government can come in and still shut them down, and so they, they always run that weird risk until it's actually fully legalized. So, but yeah, that's the topic for another day. On a non-video game stream. <laughs> yeah, we're getting close to the end of the game. I do really enjoy this uh, last level theme. Good music. Hey, Velcro! With the patch emote! Yeah, Spike, I mean, it has been surreal, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, I never thought I'd experience something like a pandemic in my lifetime. And I've always hoped to not have to experience, like, a world war or something like that. I know we've- there's been wars... ...since, you know, I've been born, but... ...you know... ...it wasn't really on, like, home soil or anything. So you just kinda, like, go about living your daily life, and that's it, but... But 
yeah, pandemic? Uh, yeah, it was... Yeah, never would have expected it. <laughs> Game Eagle's internet is now fine. I had to move to the other side of the room. Are you on Wi-Fi, Game Eagle? I would assume you're on Wi-Fi. It's probably some kind of interference or something. Jeff's like, I, I don't ever want to stop wearing a mask. You know what? I don't blame you. I've already been sick once since, uh, like, the mask mandates, you know, came off in Virginia. I had a nasty cold uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was like, oh, this sucks, man. If I had was wearing my mask, I probably wouldn't have gotten it. You know, I've been doing pinball league for the last ten weeks. And it's like just a bunch of people just like spitting in each other's faces, not even really realizing they're doing it. <laughs> we all have beers and we all start like yelling and having a good time. It's like, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then people start getting sick as a result. Yeah, I'm definitely not against masks or anything. And, like I said, if it keeps me from getting sick, then, you know, in a way, I, I really don't mind it. Because I don't like being sick. Being sick means I can't uh, do YouTube streams for you guys. <laughs> That's why I skipped out on a Halloween stream. For YouTube, anyway. Because I got sick. I got sick uh, Halloween day. And uh, I still ended up streaming on Twitch, but I was like, if the stream's gonna be awful because I'm sick, I'm gonna go ahead and just stream on Twitch. Yeah, so... It was not that fun. Game Eagle says, yeah, Wi-Fi is shoddy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you moved closer to your router, or your, or your Wi-Fi access point, or if there was some kind of interference. But that is uh, definitely a thing. Oops. Eh, I don't think I need that E-Tank. <laughs> I mean, I kind of like that too, Jeff. Jeff said, it's not even about getting sick. He loves not having to smile when he has a mask on. <laughs> Man, if, if, if I'm having a conversation with someone and, like, they're not making me happy, I just, I just don't smile. I've kind of, I've kind of gotten over it. Instead of trying to, like, fake a smile, I just don't smile. I just give them a look like, yeah, this is not entertaining. Please stop talking to me. And it's when they continue to talk to me that I get really annoyed. <laughs> Can't you see this look on my face? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, Andrew. It's like we're we're mean old men now. <laughs> we just don't give two craps. For better or for worse. I mean Jeff is actually uh he's about the same age as myself. I guess for Jeff, it's, you know, I think he's actually a lot like us, too, where he won't smile if people aren't making him happy. Um, but now he doesn't even have to think about it. He can just go around not smiling ever. <laughs> and then that frees up, like, thought processes for other things. Like the work he does.
Yeah, I, I did, Jeff, actually. Work with more, like, spectrum kind of people that don't pick up on cues. There was one co-worker I worked with. I worked with him for a long time on Night Shift. And there were days where I had, bas had to basically tell him to stop talking. Like, dude, just stop. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> He'd be like, oh, oh, okay, okay. And I, I really don't like being that way, because I'm, I'm a real asshole when I come off like that. But it's like, man, I don't want to hear your life story tonight. I got two hours of sleep today. Just please stop talking. <laughs> After giving him so many cues, like, yep, yeah, not interested, not interested, not interested. He doesn't realize it. He just keeps going on and on and on. That's- that's IT in general. A bunch of socially awkward nerds forced to sit in an office together. Yeah. <laughs> it kinda is. I should be trying to, like, use the weaknesses, but I don't remember what all the weaknesses are in this game, so I'm just gonna not bother. I was not expecting some of these to be full playthroughs, but it's just kind of what they turned into. That's fine. I'm definitely guilty of that though, Jeff, being being the rambling person. I always try to catch myself, and I, I've one thing I've tried doing as I've gotten older is trying to be more concise in like the thoughts I'm trying to get across. Uh, but sometimes, you know I just go and go and go. Alright, see ya spike balls, take care. Thanks for hanging out. Should you get a mister? I don't know, should you? You tell me. <laughs> I assume you know what the mister does. And you tell me, should you get a mister? I don't know, should you? That's what I want to know. Are you looking for a long-term relationship? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the mister, if you want to get it fully decked out, it's not cheap. So, I don't know what your finances look like, how much you want to spend, what kind of what you're looking for in a uh, little device. Either that or a Super Console X. Yeah, isn't that just like a generic emulation box? Uh, I would definitely do a mister. 
if you're looking for advice, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Man, no, the mister is excellent. And it's just getting better and better by the day. Uh, Jeff, you should, uh, you should, uh, cook, uh, cook up some uh, DiGiorno. That's what you should do with your life right now. It's gonna be a DiGiorno night for you. Um, Andrew, your favorite Castlevania is Super Castlevania 4. Even though that's not actually your favorite. But yeah, I mean, if you're looking for advice, I need to know what you're, what you want. I can't just tell you if you should buy one or not. But if you're looking for a good all-in-one emulation style advice, where everything's recreated in hardware as opposed to software emulation, you're not going to get much better than the mister. It's as simple as that. And if you like, really, really like video games like some of us, you like dozens of different platforms, or you want to experiment with platforms you haven't really messed around with before, the mister is amazing. Like you can play NES like I am right now, and it's fantastic. But you can also play, like, the Atari Lynx! And there's even a Wonder Swan core. You can get into some really obscure stuff. You can do Sega CD and TurboGrafx CD. Does that sound appealing? Then maybe you should buy a Mister. You can do various computers, like MS-DOS. IBM PC compatibles. You can do... The Amiga, the Atari ST, the Commodore 64, I believe. Arcade stuff. There are ar arcade ports. Uh, blah. Arcade cores. I can't talk right now. The thing is, they're, they're not cheap. You know, if you want a fully decked out Mister, you're looking at close to $400. But, you gotta treat it as a device that you will probably have and use for a long, long time. It's an investment. I think this is eating some of my inputs. I'm trying to jump and it's just not letting me sometimes. Yeah, Venom, yeah, the PS1 core is getting close. Closer by the day, for sure. Okay, Wiley, you know, you can appear a little bit closer down. I know there's probably a sub-weapon I can use, but I'd rather just kind of do it like this. This is one Wily fight where they actually let you do that. Some Wily fights require a very specific sub-weapon. Ever since Mega Man 2, actually. I kind of need to change my stream name to Grouchy Old Dudes. <laughs> Scott Linux says, I'm pretty satisfied with my missers. My misses. Yeah, no, the Mister is excellent. I mean, that's why I have one. It's it's great for streaming. It's great for convenience. You know, I can carry it from room to room. It's not too difficult to do that. You know, some days I just bust it out and I hook it up to my HDTV. Mine has the ability to do uh, analog video out as well, so I can run it into a CRT. So you want a really authentic experience. You know, play NES from the Mister on a CRT and component. It looks amazing. Super responsive. 
Yeah. No, no advice, Society. I don't mess with PS1 emulation, so I'm not really the guy to talk to about that, but someone else might have an answer for you. Yeah, Venom. I mean, a decent gaming PC is definitely going to run you 800 at a minimum. Probably more when, it, when you start to factor in the GPU prices. Uh, prices? I was going to say prices? <laughs> I need to get some food in me. I haven't eaten in like five or six hours now. And my first meal was Subway, and Subway never really fills me up anyway. How will a mister look in your 77-inch OLED? It'll look great. Hey, cafe man. Get to see cafe man twice in a row. Yeah, you'll be able to count the pixels, yep. <laughs> oh man, thanks for the GG, Andy, and Velcro, and other folks. Pearl Jammer is back. Welcome back. We just finished up Mega Man 5. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep streaming, but I think I'm gonna take a break to get some food. I picked up a uh, sub from the grocery store, so I think I'm going to consume that, and then I'll come back and we'll play something else. I think I'll switch games first, and then I'll, uh, oh, I'll go get some food. Ugh. Do I think this is one of the easier Mega Mans? Uh, I mean, honestly, DJ, I, I find difficulty-wise, uh... Mega Man's 4, 5, and 6, I think, are pretty even on difficulty. I don't really notice one one from either of those three being considerably more difficult than the other. And even, like, Mega Man... I mean, I, I, would, I would say Mega Man 1 is the hardest. Mega Man's 2 and 3, I'd say, are relatively even. Part 2 probably has the most trial and error gameplay of all of them. Well, maybe not. Well... Yeah, because you've got, like, you know, the Quick Man fire beams, you've got the disappearing platforms on Heat Man stage, you've got the trial and error on the second to last, well, not second to last, the, uh, the wall boss, whatever it's called, in Wily's Castle in Mega Man 2. Mega Man 3 has a couple of moments like that, too, where it's like, you know, like Needle Man stage, you have to use, uh, Rust Jet to get across. Uh... Like I said, I feel like 4, 5, and 6 are all pretty even difficulty-wise. I don't really notice a difference between them. 5 gives you extra lives like crazy, though. I mean, Mega Man 3 does that as well, and you also get a ton of E-Tanks in that game. Oh, man. Yeah, I totally agree, Venom. Mr. via HDMI looks great on any size TV. And Venom, I just realized you got the gold G icon. That means you've been, uh channel membered up here for over a year. It's probably been much longer than a year, and I'm just now noticing it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't actually say if I hover over. Oh, hey, Leo. Welcome back.
So yeah, I'm gonna do something uh, even more different. And uh, we're gonna do the home hack version of Versus Super Mario Brothers. Uh, but like I said, I'm gonna go get some food. And uh, yeah, I'll be gone like five or 10 minutes. It won't be too long. But yeah, we'll take another break and then I'll come back and we'll play some of this. Uh, so basically, someone requested Super Mario Brothers, and um, this would be more interesting because I don't know it nearly as well as regular Super Mario Brothers, and it's a, it's a lot more difficult. So, and I actually have a reason to get all the coins because you really need those extra lives on this. So, uh, yeah, Leo, you missed uh, quite a few, not as many as you probably thought. Um, I played uh, Silver Surfer, Godzilla One and Two, uh, Super C. Uh, Mega Man 5 and uh, Silkworm. Am I missing anything, guys? I think that's it. Um, I think that's it. So, but, alrighty, guys. I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Or go somewhere and then come back and watch again. <laughs>
right. I am back with food in my stomach. <clears throat> All right. So versus Super Mario Brothers came out on the versus system uh, in our case is basically like an NES, but uh, yeah, this uh, never actually got officially ported back in the day, but people went in and hacked it and made a version playable on the NES. And so what this is, is it's basically the arcade version of Super Mario Brothers. It is a lot more challenging than the original game. Uh, it also has some extra, you know, you know, fun little changes like you've got a high scoreboard now and um, yeah, stuff like that. It's uh, it's pretty cool. So, but yeah, let's see uh, if anyone's still out there in chat land. Pearl Jammer said he has uh, Versus Super Mario Brothers for Switch. Yeah, and that one uses the uh, you know the arcade palette, which is like, um, yeah, some colors are just like Mario's suit almost looks like yellow. <laughs> Uh, when he's uh, got the fire flower suit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is really cool. I, I want to get better at this. I've, I've played it, I think, a couple times on stream here, just dabbling with it. Uh, I've definitely played it a little bit on Twitch. And what's cool about playing this NES hacked version is that there's like no input lag. There's, there's noticeable input lag for me on the Switch, uh, regardless of the controller that I use. So being able to play this on the Mister, as well as even on my NES flash cart, you know, it, it's super snappy. So, <clears throat> DJ says he used to have a rear projection TV. Luckily, it had wheels. Nice, great built-in speakers. Yeah, that's one thing modern TVs unfortunately don't really have. Is as a cost-cutting measure, it's like the speakers are just either pathetic or they just don't even exist. Um, I think one of my HD TVs just didn't even have sound. Period. You had to run it uh, out into uh, another device. So. I never actually got to watch much on rear projection TVs. I don't know too many people that had them. But I'd like to see one in this day and age and see what retro games look like on it. <clears throat> no, I'm good, Leo. I like the uh I like this palette. <laughs> But yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, you can load up different palettes and you can get one that's closer to the, to the arcade system. Now, the um, original NES apparently did not have any like specific color values um, on its output. And so you'd have a game like Super Mario Brothers with where like the colors would look very different from like a different TV. Like the sky would be blue or maybe the sky would be purple or you know, like there would be color variations because of that. But the arcade hardware actually had uh, an RGB output. So it had a very specific specific set value of colors that it would it would output. So there is like a, a quote unquote correct palette for the arcade game. And there's not really a quote unquote correct palette for the console Super Mario Brothers. So it's kind of interesting. NOP and Savator, welcome. How are you doing, Savator? <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and uh, hit start. Uh, I don't know if I actually pressed the right button. Let me actually, uh, eh, I don't know. <laughs> so we'll just roll with it. Yeah, a lot of the, the early level design is gonna look pretty familiar to anyone that's comfortable with the original Super Mario Brothers. Um, but later on in the game, you will notice some very major changes. We're even seeing some changes right now, where the fire flower is up top instead of, you know, down below. But one strategy I do when I play this is I try to get all the coins that I can, simply because uh, extra lives are much more limited. And so you're going to see me playing this relatively slow, whereas the original Super Mario Brothers, I, I have a tendency of just like bolting right through it. But not this one. No extra lives from points. So I don't really need to bust the blocks or anything, I just need to get coins. Hmm. <clears throat> 
Yeah, Sean, and the, uh, there are a lot of changes like that, but also the physical level design is, uh, you know, very much mixed up and changed around. A lot of the core, like, original level designs are still here. Um... But, you know, they've been made considerably more difficult, especially, like, in castles, where... You know, in castles in the original game, you'd have a lot of um, blocks that didn't do anything. Whereas in this, like, there's a fire wheel on every single one. <laughs> every single one has one. So, like, the castles get really dangerous. Yeah, I, I'd like to get better at the Japanese Super Mario Brothers too, so I actually know what levels are from the lost levels in this. But I wouldn't be able to tell you, because I haven't beaten the Lost Levels in so long. Actually, you know, I think like a year or two ago, we actually played Lost Levels on Super Nintendo, but I don't even remember, like, what the levels were like. Because it's not something I've always gone back to. But yeah, there are still warp zones here, but they don't really, you know, they don't skip you, like, all the way ahead like they do in the NES game. Boss of Earth says he hates Japanese Mario, too. <laughs> yeah, so the, uh, the amount of coins required to get it one up, it is adjustable, I believe. Uh, in in the, I'm assuming the original hardware had dip switches. But it's definitely adjustable because I actually played the arcade version last week, and um, pretty sure I was getting an extra life at 100. So the operator had it set at, uh, you know, 100 coins, kind of like traditional console Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers. Ah, uh, you're a Master System kid, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, what am I doing? Getting a little too fast there. Yeah, this is our first castle, and like I said, like, all these blocks have the... I don't even know what the actual names are, I always call them just like fire wheels or whatever. Oh, crap. And some of this is even, you know, changed in design. Oh no, you jumped. That sucks. Yeah, I saw that, Leo. Unfortunately, they don't make that anymore. I would really love to buy one. That is definitely a repro I would I would I would pay the money for. But yeah, Retro USB doesn't make them anymore. Probably because it's a Nintendo property and they don't want to get popped by Nintendo. Just a wild guess. Oh, like a pixel of his horn touched me. Fire bars is what you think they're called, okay. Why is it called Versus Super Mario Brothers? Because that's what the arcade hardware was called. It was the, nin the Nintendo Versus system. And it's the Super Mario Brothers named for named that for that. Yeah, there were a bunch of NES games repurposed for Nintendo's Versus system. Um, Castlevania got one, which that version of Castlevania was made a lot more difficult. Although, its level design is the same as the NES game, whereas this is like... Uh, a lot of the level design is brand new and different. So not as much appeal to Versus Castlevania, unless you're kind of like an expert player. Because that added layer of challenge, uh, you know, will be important for people that are really good at the game. 
Yeah, there is a versus Excite Bike. Yeah, there's a bunch of games. It's not a ton, but there's probably at least like eight to ten different versus games. Versus systems games. There's a Gradius versus versus Gradius, which I'm guessing the base difficulty is probably increased, kind of like Castlevania. <laughs> Sean says, still can't believe versus Top Gun is a thing. So I guess versus Top Gun is also a thing. <laughs> Society says it would be cool to have one of those tabletop NES arcades. Yeah, those are called the uh, the tents. Uh, they're in these like un little like unique uh, cabinets that almost look like tents. Man, I miss Mario 35. <laughs> I played that game so much, but of course Nintendo had to delist it. For some damn reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Boss of Burp. Gradius on NES isn't that challenging. I, I learned how to play it a couple years ago, and I did a Let's Play of it. And I was like, man, this is a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's actually interesting that they did a versus Gradius, because it's like... There's already an arcade version of Gradius, why do we need an arcade version of the NES version of Gradius? And I don't know, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Maybe they did it just because Gradius is a more arcade-friendly game than something like Mega Man. Which came out first, NES Mario or Versus Mario? I'm gonna assume NES Mario, but I'm not sure. Or maybe they were right around the same time? I'm not sure. If anyone knows, let me know, because I'm curious. Leo is were those demo stations? I think uh I think you're probably talking about something else, Leo. I'm talking about the little little red tents. They were actual arcade machines. And they they were pretty common. Anyone that ever goes out to Magfest uh in Maryland, it's in January, uh they always have a bunch of the uh the red tent arcade machines. Nintendo might have had some other, like, demonstration units that were similar, but... But, yeah. Uh, but, Leo, you say you wonder if Hanser will ever put that out, like, some of the others, like, versus Castlevania. Uh, are you talking versus Gradius, or... Like, versus, uh, Top Gun or something? Because versus Gradius is out. Um, I have it. Like, I have it on PS4. <laughs> Yeah, Versus Gradius is available, Leo. Oh, 
Oh, crap. Uh, Pearl Jammer, this is... We're, we're running this technically on NES-style hardware. It's, you know... We're not running the actual arcade hardware here. In the, on the, in the Mr.'s core. It's still the NES core. And, again, what you guys have to remember is that the NES doesn't have, like, a set... set of, like, colors it outputs. So, it's... How the NES looks is gonna depend on your television. So what you remember Super Mario Brothers looking like, that's not how it looked for everybody. And with the Mister, you can change the palette if you want. There are palette options, and I can't believe I missed that. Yeah, I'm terrible at explaining technical stuff, but there's there's a lot of documentation online you can read about how the NES outputs, you know, its video signal. And that's why you get Super Mario Brothers looking very different from TV to TV and capture to capture. Well, if you're playing versus Super Mario Brothers Pearl Jammer on the Switch, things things look much different. Like, Fire Flower Mario almost looks completely yellow. That sort of thing. And that is outputting the actual RGB palette from the arcade. The arcade board does have an actual RGB... Um, ...signal it outputs. And so... You know, if you play it on a monitor that's tuned correctly, it should always look the same. Just about. How this game would look on a real versus cabinet would look a lot like it does on the Switch, except you'd be on a CRT and you'd have scan lines and. Yeah. The palette would pretty much be the same. Oh, God. <laughs> Stupid fireball. trying to duck and jump. Man, it's really set to 200 coins right now. <laughs> that makes getting extra lives a little more difficult. Yeah, uh, the the fireball was uh, was a was a troll for sure. That's why you should always just wait and then move after it. It, it you know it's visible. Oh, look at that! There's a coin block there. That is that is very different. And that's interesting. There's uh, I wonder if that was a coin block too because it didn't actually bust that block open. Yeah, 
Yeah, tiny platforms now. Not gonna take the warp zone. Alright, there are a couple of gotcha moments here. Yeah, this right here is actually harder to get through. So I like to do a ducking jump. It's not 100% necessary, but it, it does help. Hey, Stexor. Yeah, you would definitely be able to do it if you tried. But yeah, it, it is much harder than you would expect. Like, I, I don't think I've beaten it yet, actually. I've gotten to the end of World 7, maybe even the, like the early parts of World 8. I don't remember. But yeah, it's, it's very challenging compared to the original Super Mario Brothers. And that's what's fun about it to me. It's not like lost levels of difficulty, but it is still significantly harder than the original game. Hmm? I don't really care about the points. Yeah, Mari, that wasn't the farthest I've made it, though. I've, I've made it past 7-2 uh, before. I have a score on one of the, the local arcade machines that's like... 7-4 or something like that. Pretty sure I got to the castle on it. Whoa there. Alright, that's how it's done. Uh, Leo, not that I'm aware of. I believe it just ends at 8-4. Oh, it's the arcade version. I can't pause it. I'm trying to use some chapstick because it's, uh, it's all cold and whatnot. My lips are getting dry. Oh, I messed that up. star. Yeah, for this part, I kind of have to get lucky. This is kind of not a good place to, uh... Not a good place to not have any power-ups. Uh, Pearl Jammer, someone asked that question like five seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, someone said the Famicom game. Mm. <laughs> Society's having deja vu. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> oh, man. Let's <sighs> see if I can, like, I wonder if I can bait him down this way. No, he's not going to. Like, I can try to do that, but no. Alright, Jeff, uh, don't do that, man. Seriously, dude, stop screwing around. I mean, it's fun when you screw around and... It's innocent, but don't start reusing other people's names. It's just messed up. Hey, Mark. We'll go ahead and continue. Oh, 
Oh, and I'm back at 5-1 as well. I mean, in a way, that's actually a benefit. Maybe I can get a, get an upgrade or something. <sighs> Let's see. anything here for me to get. Uh, Pearl Jammer, not that I'm aware of. The Versus thing didn't really last that long. There was the Play Choice 10, which was kind of like a spin-off of the Versus thing, but... The thing about the Versus games is they had unique twists on the existing games, whereas the Play Choice 10 cabinets the play choice cabinets, they were literally just the NES versions of the game, so they weren't tweaked for the arcade setting. Yeah, see, this is the problem. There's actually, like, there's no, no power-ups here. Coins. Society always has to think of flannel shirts when he thinks of Pearl Jam. <laughs> Wonder if flannel shirts are coming back. I went out to a show the other night and there's a bunch of people wearing them. I was like, uh oh. Mark, bell bottoms will never come back. Thankfully. Actually, never say never. Unfortunately. Yeah, thankfully, this pattern is still pretty much the same. That part's not the same. <laughs> You got a bunch of flannel wearers here. Cafe Man, Leo. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. Good level.
No, Mark, you're not allowed to wear what you're comfortable with. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just like you're only allowed to play certain video games. Yeah, so in this level, pretty much like all the pipes have piranha plants. The level design itself hasn't really... <sighs> Jeff, you've got like absolutely nothing going on today, do you? Seriously, man. I don't even know how long it takes to, to change names like that. You always seem so productive, but obviously you've gotten nothing done today. <laughs> Ooh, I got super lucky on that. <clears throat> yeah, that level is a pain. Glad I didn't lose my fire flower. Every Pearl Jam fan should have some flannel tucked away in their closet. Yeah, if you don't, then you're not really a Pearl Jam fan, are you? I wouldn't know. <sighs> this puts me on edge. Oh! I was not expecting that. It takes five seconds? <laughs> You've been editing photos for the last four hours. Yeah, I was gonna say, I figured you were probably doing something like that. Oh, jeez. Yeah, the problem with continuing is that you don't continue at the same uh, level. You have to go back to the beginning of the entire world. And I lost. I knew that was going to happen. Whee! Now I think it's Hammer Bowser. Oh, that was close. Alright, cool. I don't, how did I miss that? Actually, you know what? This is a good time to just restart this level. Because I know I'm going to get to the end and not have any lives. I like the funky, uh, high scoreboard music. It's fun. Alright, see you, Mark. What do I throw on if it's chilly? Well, generally, in my apartment, I just turn the heat on. Or I will- I wear, like, a hoodie or something. Or just, like, a light jacket. And then, when I go outside... Kind of the same thing. I also have heavier jackets. Uh oh. Not worth it. Whoa. 
Well, this is true too, Leo. She actually does, uh, she snuggles up next to me at night. And so she does actually keep me warm. <laughs> and vice versa, I think. Dude, I feel like the spring timing is very different in this one. I never mess up springs in the NES game. Hey, Major Havoc? Are there flannel hoodies? I mean, I don't see why not. <laughs> I wouldn't know, because I'm not a flannel guy. Yeah, society, it is, it is way more challenging. It's, it's one of my goals is to be able to beat this consistently. And I'm not there yet. And it's not even, like, super trollish level design like, you know, uh, Japanese Mario 2 is, but it's still pretty mean. <laughs> it's still pretty mean-spirited. Uh, no, Major Havoc, they were asking specifically flannel hoodies. Not just a flannel is a thing. Oh my god, really? Yeah, like, the current is, is much, much harder in this, too. When were ponchos popular? Uh, never. <laughs> Alright, I'm taking the top path. Crazy man. I hope you got some good photos. <sighs> Ponchos were popular in the early 90s for a hot minute. I am okay. <laughs> Maybe I just never noticed because I was a kid. I was a kid in the early 90s. That was probably like a mushroom or something. Change the pattern in the arcade one? Um, hmm. Yeah, it's supposed to be just down and then middle and then up. And it is totally not the same pattern now. Yeah, that's not cool. Maybe it's up, middle, down? I don't know. No? Up. Up. 
up. No, down, 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 middle. Well, I don't have any choices. <laughs> Ugh. Up, down, up. Oh my god, why are you making me do this game? Never know. I don't think so. Hey, Flynn, thanks for the two bucks. I appreciate that. What's the, uh, what's the solution, Leo? I feel like I've tried just about every combination. Down, up, up? Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I tried that. Jump up here, go up. Drop down, go up. Yeah, I thought I did that. Let's see. Oh, it is down, up, up. Wow. knows the solution for the second half, let me know. That's right, it was down, up, up. Yeah, and the only thing about this is I just don't know what the route is, that's all. Touch the floor in the second gap. Stay up, touch the floor in the second gap. Okay. Uh, this one? <laughs> I have no idea. No, that didn't work. Second gap. Think about the second, the wrong second gap. Hmm. 
Well, I think this is going to be the end for me. In versus Super Mario Brothers tonight. Oh, wait. I think I know what Leo's saying. Do I need to touch that tiny little pillar? Seriously. Very bottom, okay. Bottom, top, top, bottom, top, middle. What? I don't know even know how to decipher that because there are so many different gaps and, and uh, platforms. Same thing happened last time I played this. Honestly, it's, it seems better to have small Mario in certain parts. He's more nimble. He can dodge more, at least. do that. I already know that, JS. Don't need the backseat drive. Don't need the backseat drive, people! I know how to play video games. That's why I'm here. <laughs> streaming on this stupid YouTube channel. <laughs> You want to tell people what to do? You should make your own stupid YouTube channel. And then tell people what to do. This is... I, I feel like I'm just getting burned out on this game at this point. We've been at it for a little while. The problem with trying to duck is that you're constantly pulled in by the current. Also, FYI. <laughs> make sure not to get hit by the enemies! I'm trying! I'm trying! I'm just gonna get a game over. We'll try it one more time. more credits that I'm not going to use. Alright. Last try, guys. Dexor, that is phenomenal advice. I'm gonna do just that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to give you guys a super hard time. That's just all I request. It's just no backseat driving. <laughs> I don't need the help. Um, unless it involves a really ridiculous puzzle on 7-4. And see... Oh, look at that! There's no current. Stupid game. Oh, now there's current on that one. Oh my god, I got pulled in by the current. <laughs> yeah, that's all. I just know backseat driving unless I request it. You'll know when I want it. <laughs> You'll know when 
what I wanted. Just like in real life, I want no help until I ask for it. Oh my- alright, we're done. We're done with this game. I'm just- clearly, my mind is not with it right now. <laughs> the princess is very much in another castle in this version, Cafe Man. Yeah, all- the, I mean, all that stuff is very similar to the NES game. Um... I apparently don't have Versus Top Gun on here? If it is a thing, I don't have it. I do have Versus Excite Bike and stuff like that. Alright, let's just switch over to something else. <laughs> Get the mushroom! It'll make Mario become big! And Jeff goes, Society, are you sure? I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need some some uh need you to cite some resources. Or sources. Not resources. Jesus Christ, I can't talk right now. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna have to look at a long play of that solution someday, and then I'll just I'll you know try to learn how to go through it. But man, yeah, that's that's tough. And they want you to just kind of figure that out on a timer. That's just I mean, I, it, technically it's the same way in the original Super Mario Brothers, but... Um... <sighs> like, your timer ticks down a lot faster in this one, and you're, you're, you know, if you're playing this in the arcade, you're paying money to, to play it. Paying money. Someone actually had mentioned this game earlier. I'm gonna try it for like a minute or two. It'll be the shortest timestamp on my video. <laughs> Apparently it's chess where people actually fight each other. Hey, see ya Lawrence, take care. Uh, Pearl Jammer, no. There is a Saturn core in development, but it's, as far as I'm aware, nowhere close to being done. Light side or the dark side? I'll go light side first. I'll go dark first. Oh, it is like dudes. Okay. Hmm. Very interesting. Seems like an early kind of version of battle chess. Well, Leo, battle chess came out to a lot of consoles. It came out to NES, <laughs> came out to 3DO. Okay, so they can go, uh... I thought pawns could only go two spaces up in chess. Maybe I, just, I probably don't know chess rules very well. What the rules are in this game, how it compares to real chess. Looks like there are like something going on with the play field. Yeah, it's it's like a variation. Oh yeah, Leo, I probably f Oh, and you actually move your characters around. Oh, this is actually kind of cool. So it's not just like knowing chess, and there are some liberties taken. It's like not identical to chess rules. Yeah, Sean, you're the one that mentioned it earlier. I was like, I should try this. Kinda interesting, actually. <laughs> it's chess, and then it's and then it's a uh, action game. <laughs> of course, I don't know how dangerous any of these guys are, right?
Yeah, the pawns are... The pawns are not good. Dark units are stronger on black tiles. Okay. So I guess that means light units are stronger on light tiles as well. Okay, projectile enemies. You have to wait for the projectile to charge back up. Yeah, but I mean, Pearl Jammer, if you don't need the money, then, you know, maybe just hold on to it. I mean, prices have gone up to a ridiculous level, like, it's not a bad time to sell, and I don't know how much higher prices are going to keep rising, so there is always that. Ah, oh, almost. <laughs> Knowing that, like, they can only have one projectile out every few seconds, I can just wait for them to shoot, and then, uh... Yeah, just wait for them to shoot. And then hit them in between, in between shots. Magic you can access on the board. Forget if it's start or select. Okay. Hey, Atrocity! Yeah, that's, that's a good take on it. So Atrocity says one thing he learned is that if you have a personal attachment to something, regardless if it's a game or something from your childhood, it's a bad idea to sell it. He learned that the hard way. Yeah, so... Yeah, I think we've all kind of been there to one degree or another. Okay, it looks like I can't move until I bring these pawns out. Okay, this guy's a melee, so I'm gonna get wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you start to really miss the things that you were much more nostalgic about. Absolutely. Again. Yeah, Jeff, I, I hear that. Yeah, nostalgia is definitely a slippery slope. You can, uh, you get overwhelmed by it and just make a lot of bad choices. I'm gonna go ahead and try to fight this guy because this is a projectile character. Is this? Was I don't even know what that was.
It is kind of easy to get into, like, hoarder territory without even realizing it. Man, he got me. I wasn't sure if he was a projectile character until it was too late. Projectile guy too. Okay. I didn't realize that. Come on. Oh, I still got a hit. <sighs> yeah, Jeff, I I'm not gonna lie, like, when I got laid off and I got a decent chunk of money from Severance and stuff like that, it was... I would just go out and buy stuff because, you know... Wait, it's my only form of attack? Okay, this is gonna be a little weird. Wow, so that's like a phoenix, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I was just going out to game stores and stuff like that, because I had nothing better to do. Besides so looking for a job, of course. <laughs> I ended up spending a lot of money. Just because I was bored. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. It's like... Um... More the same kinds of tiles you're on, it, overall it changes the whole board, apparently. Just kind of- I mean, this is actually a really cool game, I didn't think I'd like this. I thought it was just literally chess. I'm not the biggest chess guy. these guys because they're really fast. Cool. Got him. Apparently helps in this game. Hmm, I haven't seen this before. Oh! I guess sometimes if they're lit up, you can shoot through them. Other times, like, when they're down, you can... Or vice versa, you can... I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm gonna stream you too long. <laughs> uh, I don't want the Phoenix. Okay. 
Now that I kind of know what I'm doing, I feel like I need to try again. Yeah, those guys with clubs are really fast. Decent variety in the backgrounds, too, which is kind of cool. Four of the five glowing tiles. Oh, that's what the glowing tiles are for. Okay. Pretty sure this is a projectile guy. Jeez. Hulk smash. He's a projectile guy. Yeah, well, me too, Leo. I thought it was literally just chess. Like, this is... this is... this is very different, actually. It's similar, but it's more different than it is similar. I mean, there's a complete action element to, to it. Like, battle chess, there's no action element to it in terms of actual gameplay. You just watch opponents fight each other. There's no actual, like, skill involved outside of just regular chess skill. Hey, Sea Snake! Yeah, I think you're right, Leo. I think it was a big computer title, and I, again, I never paid attention to it either. That guy is, shoots way faster than me. I mean, that's a good question, Atrocity. I'm not sure. I mean, I would think the best bet is to just kill everything if you can. <laughs> The more you kill, the easier your life is, and the easier it is to grab the uh, the various locations. What just happened here? I didn't see him move. Ah. Oh. Oh, and I can't even occupy all the spaces because, uh, I'm only down to three, three people. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm trying to be clever about, you know, they only shoot in eight directions. I'm trying to position myself in a way where I can, uh... Actually, can I...? Okay, I can only move three blocks. Cool. 
Yeah, they shoot so much faster. Well, I mean, this is pretty much it. <laughs> So the wizard can use spells. I think Sean had mentioned something like that, and I wasn't really paying attention. <sighs> okay, we're going to try that again, now that I have an idea of what I'm doing. It's interesting, there are some Japanese dudes on this, but there's also like uh, Western developers as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I realize that, you know, you're stronger on the tile of the same kind, but what I like is that there's still the skill element involved, you know, so even if, like, the opponent is technically stronger, like, as long as you're dodging their projectiles and timing your attacks right, like, you can still overpower them. And that's kind of what I'm liking about this. There is a strategic element, 100%, but, um... There's also more to it. Select a spell, teleport, cancel. Heal, shift time, exchange, summon elemental. Revive, what? Oh, I guess you can basically like use a turn. <laughs> That's probably a waste. a good guy to use to, uh... Magic costs your main unit's life, so use sparingly. Okay, yeah, I didn't know that. Alright. So I guess the idea would be, if you're using magic, just make sure, uh don't have to get into a fight. It is done. <laughs> Be cool, there's a sound table. Some wizard echoing, it is done. <laughs> That'd be nice. I just realized I only have... Oh, this is kind of like... Okay, I see. There's like three unique ones. And this is one of my unique ones. I should probably bring them back. <laughs> so you can just uh, teleport enemies around too. It's very interesting. Did the Tiger system get a port of Resident Evil 2? Yeah, the game.com. 
Yeah, it did. Indeed, it did. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Should have been able to dodge that. Yeah, see, I can see that his health bar was a lot higher because he was on the black tile. Yeah, I would really like these projectile guys to take out the melee attack enemies. strategy backfired. That's probably one of my best, uh, one of my best characters. Hey, Society, thank you very much for that. He says, gonna take off, man. Thanks for another fun stream. Well, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate that. So that thing can shapeshift into other characters. So you can, that can backfire really bad. I guess it actually shapeshifts into whatever you are. I'm guessing that's what's happening. Yeah, I guess you have to watch out for the, uh, the glowing tiles. Good against the melee guys. <sighs> Phoenix against Phoenix alternative is is uh Seems good. Yeah, their heads that come up and out, uh, up and down from the ground. take out all the pawns, all the grunts. Hmm. 
Oh, well, there goes my phoenix. Another one of my best uh, characters. Damn it, man. Yeah, they're getting smart about when they attack. I keep expecting them to be dumb and just try to fire, like, the second they can. That's right, I do have revive. Hmm. Exchange, summon elemental, revive. I guess the sort of teal ones are charm squares? There are multiple shapeshifters. Yeah, I do not like melee on melee. I always seem to get wrecked. Oh, it's the same shapeshifter. Okay. Yes, I did, Leo. Yeah. That shapeshifter is kind of rough. health he has. It doesn't tell me. Yeah. Hey, Cafe Man, thank you for that. Fun sessions, I agree. Yeah, Leo, I've already downloaded that. Yeah, I'm super glad Ridge Racer 6 is backwards compatible now. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Dead or Alive's are compatible as well. Yep, yep. She made another shapeshifter appear. God damn it. Um... Ugh. 
Double KO? Double KO, I guess? Or... Yeah. I should have had that. That was my fault. And these enemies do have pretty erratic movement. Alright, I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, he pretty much has to walk over to me to do anything, and that's just... You know, <laughs> very easy to hit. All right, I don't think I'm gonna be able to. Well, I don't know. His health is pretty low. Oh no! Wow. The heads are so confusing, because you think that, like, when they're down, you'd be able to shoot over them. But no, when they're up is when you can shoot over them. It's really weird. Yeah, I think so, Cafe Man. This is my first time playing the game. I assume that's what it is. Wow, when I attack them, when I attack the golems, it's like my character just gets stuck. I didn't know that. <sighs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> he says, anyways, glad I could be a bad influence. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. Uh, I, like I said, it's my first time playing this game. It's pretty cool. I'll, I'll definitely play it again. I'll definitely pick up an actual cartridge of it, too. AI seems to prioritize attacking you over, um, you know, trying to take the, uh, the tiles. Wait, no, it actually looks like when the heads are... I'm so confused. It actually looks like when the heads are down, you can shoot over the- I th Ugh. I think I'm just tired. <laughs> I think that's all it is.
That was my fault. I shouldn't have shot first like that. Because it's not like you can just mash the button and shoot more. It doesn't work like that. I can see why people like like this on computers back in the day because this is a good a very good multiplayer game. I see what he's trying to do. He's trying to get the instant win. Yeah, because it's not just all mental. It's like there are a lot of different types of strategies and there's still the action element. Water elemental appears. I don't even know what this is. Oh, projectile. Yeah, I remember Wrath. That always looked pretty cool to me. I think I tried it a little bit and it seemed pretty neat, but I never put a lot of time into it. Okay, so the elemental just, uh... It just disappears. It's like a... a one-time thing. Yeah, Leo? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I had a feeling she would have a projectile.
Yeah, Atrocity. I mean, that's the ideal way to play. Because you get more health if you're on the tiles of the same kind. But you can also get really aggressive and try to take them on when they're on their stronger tiles. Ah. <laughs> Alright, let's gonna be a one-on-one. -on -one. I think she has a lot more health. Because I used uh, a lot of magic. Really? No idea what it means by that. Oh. She used her spell that imprisons me. <laughs> oh, hey, I mean that's a that's a really cool game. I was not expecting it to be cool. I wonder if there's anything else outside of. Um, it's pretty much just that or two players, and that's it. Um, yeah, that's the entire game. Can't use magic, good or bad, on units on the glowing tiles. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like it. I've never actually played it before until now. It's an uh, interesting rule set. I'm terrible at this game, but I'll play it anyway. I don't think I've really played it on my channel before. <laughs> yeah, Archon's really cool. I'm gonna have to check out uh, videos of the other versions of the game just to see how, you know, it compares. This is one of those games I've always wanted to complete, but I just never have. One day. One day. No, that wasn't a bad influence. That was a good influence, because I discovered a game I, I like. <laughs> it's a good thing. Part of this stream is me, I've wanted to try out games that I didn't really know too well, but also play some ones that I'm pretty familiar with, and then stuff like this where I'm kind of halfway on, where it's like, I like it, but I've never finished it, that sort of thing. I've always, I mean, in terms of completing Battletoads and Double Dragon, I've always wanted to do the NES one too, because it feels more like the first Battletoads than any of the other ports do.
It's actually funny, they can stomp on your, your, uh, your fingers. <laughs> I don't know about that, Pearl Jammer. Uh, I actually beat Battletoads Genesis first before beating the NES game. There are a couple of parts that are definitely more annoying on the Genesis one, but there are a lot of parts I think are also a lot easier. So overall, I'd say Battletoads Genesis is an easier version. Twelve-hour stream? Not quite. We're, we're we're getting close to seven hours. Oops. It's a really good-looking game on NES. A lot of details. There goes a life. Oh, you can instant kill it. Okay. <laughs> it's a good effect. I wonder if the headbutt's just as good as it is in the first Battle Toads. I assume it is. Nice. <laughs> he goes flying off the back of the screen. Oh, man. <sighs> Big blag. Dude, like, the animation in this is a lot more creative than the first Battletoads. Like, you actually smack them on top of the head, <laughs> and their head just goes back, and then you can poke them. Man, I, I totally forgot about a lot of these details. It's been a long time since I've even tried this one. Throw these back in. Yeah, no, it's a simple, uh, like, line-scrolling effect. You actually saw it in a bunch of games of this era. But it's convincing, you know?
Do you think it's even worth it to try to collect these rarer games physically? I mean, I don't know. It depends on how much money you have and how much you want to spend. A hundred plus dollars is a lot to some people and it's not that much to others, so it just kind of depends. With my NES collection, I decided that, you know, some of like the hundred plus dollar titles I'm willing to pay for just to have them again. But they have to be like games I really, really, really want. And also how I obtain those games also makes a difference too. Like, when I was acquiring some of my more expensive games, I did trade-ins for them, you know? I got rid of stuff I didn't really want. So... You know, it's kind of it's kind of relative, depending on uh, how you're going about it, and what your priorities are, and how you're getting your games. Notice that some of the sound effects, like the crunchier sound effects, are sound a little distorted. I'm gonna have to play this on original hardware to see uh, how it compares. Could just be a setting in, like, you know, the Mister's audio settings. Five hits, huh? Invincibility. There we go. Yeah, that's true, Jeff. I agree. It's less hollow if you, you know, when you're paying for games that, like, you actually enjoy. Oh, you can still do the, uh, this is totally like the first battle Toad's engine. You can do the super jump. I guess there was like an extra life opportunity there if you got all the uh, the canisters. Oh, sh I didn't even see him. Jeez, come on, dude. Uh, I mean, V-Chill, what I would recommend is just like, you know, just think it over and, uh... Wow, really? Why am I not able to attack this guy? There we go. Um... I mean, I guess one way to look at it is it's just video game collecting. It's not the end of the world if you can't or don't want to, like, buy these more expensive games. Um, just don't do it, you know? You'll be fine. They're just video games. But yeah, I mean, it does suck, like, wanting some of these titles, and, you know, it's just, it's really hard to justify. I do try to tell people, be into this for playing them, first and foremost. And for that, you don't need to actually own the physical games, but if collecting is a hobby... There does become a point where you have to say, like, okay, this is really worth it. I'm just gonna have to live with the fact that I can't own, like, this $1 or $200 game. I guess Blag is literally just gonna do the same thing over and over, huh? Ooh, nice. Still got him.
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's easy to fully load it yourself. You don't really need to have somebody else do it for you. Okay, Leo. Oh. Kicked it off screen. Oh, that's right. You're supposed to, like, latch onto that orb up top. I mean, uh, Xbox, Jeff, it does have some $200 plus games like OutRun 2006. But yeah, sooner rather than later, I'd, I'm going to say it's going to have more of that happening as, as collectors start moving to that platform. And as people start to get more nostalgic about it as well. You know, because we're, we're at the 20 year mark in the original Xbox now. Yeah, a lot of the games are still pretty affordable there. I do agree. Hey, 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 Sketchcraft, what's going on? Yeah, Leo, speaking of that backwards compatibility, I wish they would just make delisted games compatible. Like, screw licensing, like, these aren't for sale anymore, just let the people that originally bought them play them. <laughs> I would love to see that happen. But yeah, a absolutely Pearl Jammer, I mean, the flashcards, if you just want to play, flashcards are kind of like an essential now. Unless you already happen to have, like, you know, a full NES set. Yeah, Jeff, it's fluctuated here and there, too. There was a time where it was, like, 250 Like, I'd, I'd actually tried selling it uh, when it was that expensive, but... It seems like it's come back to around 200 on average. Or maybe not on average. Maybe it's a little bit lower on average, but, yeah, they do actually sell for, you know, over, over 200 sometimes. Ow. You think the new hand-drawn Battletoads is super underrated? Oh, man. <laughs> I, I, I kind of need to try it again, because I haven't played it since it came out. And man, I did not have a good time with it. But, uh, I mean, maybe I'd like it again, or better, if I, if I went back and tried it again. I think it's had some updates, too, since I first played it. I played it, like, right when it came out. Um, I'm not sure if they've, like, like rebalanced it at all or anything. Yeah, that first full playthrough of it kind of, like, left a bad taste in my mouth. I never went back to it again. I gotta try it again, though. Some people really liked it. Some people, like, legitimately liked it. But I, uh... Yeah, man, I, I I think it took me, like... It was, like, eight hours to play through it on my first playthrough. Maybe it was, like, a ten-hour playthrough. I don't remember. It was... Yeah, it was a long playthrough. One of my other problems, too, is I did put it on the highest difficulty right away, which was a mistake, I think. 
So I kind of had like, um, I think I, I probably made it less fun than it probably should have been. It's, it got pretty, pretty brutal later on in the game. And it was, it was so long. All right, you know what, Sketchcraft, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try to fire it up again sometime soon, and <laughs> maybe I'll even put it on the easiest difficulty instead. I really liked how the game looked, though. I, it, the graphic style ended up being a lot cooler than I thought it was gonna be going into it. Some of the music's actually really good, too. I love the, uh, the animations in that game. Like, the, uh, the cutscenes, they were actually really funny to me. Ugh. I'm not sure if I should just, like, punch them... Maybe that's what I should do. Oh, jeez. <laughs> These toads are getting violent. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Konami, I don't know what Konami's doing with, with their properties, but they did announce earlier in the year that, you know, they, they were planning on doing another Silent Hill, another Metal Gear, and uh, another Castlevania. Like, they're starting up their uh, video game division again. Internal development, I should say. Okay, that was interesting. Man, I'm just getting wrecked here. Sketchgrass says uh, he would never play a Battletoads game on high difficulty. <laughs> the humor and writing was top-notch for sure. It's no Streets of Rage 4, but it was solid fun. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, like I said, I'll have to try it on the lower difficulty and see if I can, you know, have a smoother playthrough with it. I was pulling my hair out at the end of it. Oh. So tough. <laughs> That's just crazy. He grabs them by the hair and flings them all over the place. tell me that this is uh, easier than the original Battletoads, and I, I don't know if I agree with that. Maybe I'm just not good enough at this yet. Wow, they've got crazy priority when they get up. Yeah. Okay, you do not want to kick them. And yeah, I agree, guys. Streets of, Rage, Streets of Rage 4 was pretty awesome. It's one I've wanted to put more time into again. Uh, I played it, you know, about a week or two after it came out. Went through it a few times. I even streamed it here. And I really liked it, but I haven't really played it since. So many games, so little time. Those crows are a lot harder to juggle. Oh, jeez. Jeez. <laughs> Give me 
to me! No! <laughs> that probably would have been the extra life. I assume you still get the extra lives from them. Ugh, that's game over. Alright, that's it for Battle Toads and Double Dragon. Ugh. Ugh. Alright, let's switch games. My cat's probably wondering what the hell's going on. <laughs> she tried to come in here on my break, and I was like, nope, 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 nope. Whole lot of nope. Because I know if I let her in here, she would just be, like, nagging at me the whole night. Alright, I'm going to get wrecked by this one. We're going to try it anyway. O'Hare. Uh, this is a notoriously difficult game for the system. I've never finished it either. Never even came close. <laughs> so many games, so little time, and it doesn't even help that I did another playthrough of Skyrim of the 10th anniversary. <laughs> I know, that's like, I don't even get to play games like those because they take so long. It takes away from all these shorter games I want to learn. Good old Konami music. So good. All right. See, so, yeah, I guess you get to pick the first four planets in any order you want. That's it. I was trying to get on the platform. Uh-oh. So it looks like you can shoot downwards, but you can't shoot diagonally. Whoa, and you can apparently fall through platforms. Alright, health increase. Yeah, it's weird that my charge only makes me jump straight up. I'm gonna guess the charge does different things for different characters. Oh, you can shoot straight up. Okay, cool. Adrian had one and sold it. Yeah. It's the story of uh, a lot of our lives. Regretting selling certain things. Okay. Bucky's movement is so fast. Ow. Whenever I see beehives, I think of uh, Joe and Mac, the arcade game. And actually the Super Nintendo game, too, now that I think about it. Don't think the NES version of Joe and Mac has uh, beehives. Why did you jump like that? Oh, you know, I, I think it was. I think I was charging up my attack by accident. 
So I did a completely accidental jump just by doing a super tiny, like, baby charge. Alright, so this is not Mega Man. I can't just hold in the, uh, the attack button. I'll get punished for it. <laughs> Don't fall into the water! <laughs> Press the B button to shoot! There we go. Simple platforming. I had a feeling that was gonna happen. Uh, Leo, no, I've never even heard of that. I definitely have not played that. Oh yeah, Sketchcraft. Yeah, the arcade bucket right here is really cool. Really nice looking game, fun gameplay. I played that one a lot as a kid in the arcade. Lives. First level, there's all this stuff going on. Kids probably rented this back in the day and were like, screw this game, this is too hard. <laughs> figured it out already. Drop. Oh, how do you do that without taking damage? Jump over him? No. I guess you have to just stand right next to him. Like, literally just sit right here? Yep. You gotta be kidding me, man. Oh. Oops, I made the same mistake again. Okay, we got it. Something like that? Yeah, sure. Ah, I see. It doesn't go very far. Hey, there we go. That's for Scarlet's conversation starter earlier. Name things that shot projectiles in the backgrounds. For me, I was thinking distant backgrounds. That's exactly what those volcanoes are doing. Yeah, Atrocity, this is definitely one for the flash card. <laughs> 100%. A real cartridge is like over 150 right now. 
It is dumb! <laughs> And I uh, figures those would kill me in inst instantly. Mm. Oh, that's I did the uh, the baby charge again by accident. <sighs> Oh, you can't even charge it, then jump and use it. Man. Oh, that was bad. Okay, let me try this again. Alright, definitely seems like the kind of game where you need to know your abilities. Mega Man 2 style? <laughs> Great. Don't know these, uh, you know, platform patterns. Good lord. <sighs> Continue. Hopefully, it's right here. Yep, yeah, okay, good. Yeah, you guys are right. They are pretty generous with checkpoints. That's good. Otherwise, this game would be a big nope from me. I, I would not want to put the, the effort into beating this. If they made me go, like, all the way back to the beginning. Mm. This is definitely a save state section. Practice via save states to, to memorize the, uh, the layout. The other little dude is actually faster than Bucky. I, I'm gonna assume he's probably not. Yeah, Sean, the beat 'em, uh, the arcade version is a beat 'em up with guns. No, I think they're both about the same speed. Have to go right. Wow, that wasn't a pain in the ass or anything. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know if we'll ever be able to let's play this one. It seems like a lot of memorization. I like the life force flames, that's nice. This guy's like low projectile arc is kind of nice for this part. Thankfully, you have a health bar in this, you don't die instantly.
Imagine if this had a Castlevania 3 style character switching mode where it, it took forever to switch between characters. <laughs> Thankfully it doesn't. It's fine for Castlevania 3, but it would not be good for this. Jammer asks, hardest game on NES? NES TMNT? I'd probably say no, because like I can get to the last level in that game, and I feel like with just a little bit of foresight and practice, I'd be able to actually, you know, beat the last level consistently. I just haven't bothered to put the time in. Stuff like this feels a lot more challenging. Okay, there's a lot of stuff in this that's just like, gotcha! Ha 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 ha! Ugh. And just imagine being able to uh, one credit clear this game. Oh, I have to go on top of that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it comes back. Insane. No, of course, instant death. <laughs> Instant death. I guess that's how you do it. Shot. And he also just jumps high. Whoa, he can latch on the walls? How do I do that? Huh. Interesting. Oh, he can't shoot vertically, though. Hmm, ice physics. Everyone's favorite. I actually like ice physics. 
makes for interesting uh, movement tech. Yeah, exactly, Sean. I was thinking the exact same thing, like, on the boss fight. Like, why do I even bother about taking damage? Because either I'm going to get nailed by an insta-kill, or it's only going to do, like, one block. There's doesn't seem like a lot of in-between right now. Of course, that could change later on. But right now, it doesn't seem like a lot of in-between. Oh! You can't... Walk on those purple ones. Okay. We're learning things. It's actually kind of fun doing this because you guys get to see sort of my learning process as I go. Oh, interesting. Only this guy can break these. Uh... Wait. <laughs> Does that mean if you get here without him that... Uh, you can't break these blocks? I'm confused. Oh man, it's like Battletoad Snakes. to kill. It's either instant kill or you barely take any damage. Oh, this game is crazy. Speed strats. Oh. Speed death strats. There we go. It's definitely one of those games where it's like, you know, it's like, do, do, do the lives even matter? Oh, jeez. So, as a result, does the game over screen actually matter? How much you do a hack of this game where it's just like no game over screen? That's what modern precision platforms are like. They just let you can like just try again and again and again and again. And for stuff like this, that's extreme trial and error. That's a good design choice. You know, you end up wasting a lot less time. Whoops. You know, this is about as close to a precision platform I can think of on the, as it gets on the NES. A lot of NES games are hard, but they're not like this, where it's like Super Meat Boy or Celeste or something like that. <laughs> 1001 Spikes, another example. Yeah, and, if, and you know, this, these are just the first few levels. Like, this game's pretty long, if I remember correctly. And it gets even more insane on the later levels in the game, supposedly. Konami clearly hated players that rented games back in the day. They're like, this is for all the all the renters. 
<laughs> it's like you're never gonna beat this in, in the same weekend that you, get, that you rent it. Gonna have to buy it! Why does it do that sometimes? Stop it. Uh, Adam, I do have VR. Yeah. You need to cop yourself a mister. Yes, you do. I think. The mister is really good. part doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it's not letting me jump down. You can use the small guy to break the floor? much floor is breaking. Oh, I see. can't jump down there. MUVR, which is a 90s bedroom simulator where you can play a bunch of retro games and even watch movies. Oh, that's kind of cool. This one is testing my patience. Oh, I keep forgetting I can't jump. So those are spikes, and they kill you instantly. doing a lot more damage.
keep messing that up. Jeez, how many hits do you take? <laughs> Game Eagle says there's even a code to activate one-hit deaths, making this game even harder. Jeez. <sighs> Get the apparently watch for how high the water is. And then that's when he goes and he freezes it. up again. Mechanics are weird. I, I really do not like the charge up that makes your characters jump because I have a tendency of holding down the fire button, which makes me just charge and then do like a little jump. I messed that up again. Jeez, it's like it's, it's intended for you to get close to dying. <sighs> Man, that was rough. Very hard in my hands and arms. Yellow Planet. Okay. Give me a second, guys. Alright. Fast lasers. And uh, whatever that is. Also notice is I think when it comes to like getting a game over, your life and power are only decreased for the character you get a game over with. Because all my other characters, their life bars and power meters are way smaller.
Everything they do at least give you a lot of extra lives. Oh, you can control that. Oh, okay, that's real interesting. <laughs> I mean, that seems like a pretty useful attack. Oh, and you can't switch till you land back on the ground. That's a bummer. Had a feeling this was a vertical section. platforms at weird angles. That's exactly what these are. Uh-oh. And I'm dead. Should have actually switched over to a different character for that. Get the one up, then die. And I just realized your life power ups do not uh, respawn. Oh! I got lucky there for a second, but I didn't realize I was riding that rock. It seems like you get extra lives from points. I heard a little jingle. Oh. Mm. This is too fast for my aging eyes. <laughs> So you don't really have to react, like, while it's moving. Extra life every 10,000? Okay. I held the charge button for a split second again, so he jumped. I'm 
but just not fire. It's just a habit of me to constantly be shooting in case any enemies appear and the bullets will kill them right away. the other part all over again every time. Now that's just a time waster. Because this is not a hard part right here. It's the spikes that you worry about. Ugh. Actually, I'm wondering if I can jump onto that other one right away. Maybe I can shorten it up. Let's see. there, and I don't know if I can even reach it. Yeah, I don't think I can do it. I keep jumping when I see that green part. Like, ugh, why? It's just like, just a reflex. I did it again. Held on the button for a split second and it just jumped on its own. Oh man. 
Yeah, we're at 1130 p.m. Streaming for almost eight hours. Chat's getting a little quiet. So what I think I'll do is I will probably switch games soon. Either that or I'll stop the stream soon. We'll see. Still out there watching. Good to know. Thank you, Leo. Dude, there's this is uh Hi hey, Jose, well thank you for that. You're welcome. Got it. Hey, yep. <laughs> It either does one block of health or it kills you instantly. you instantly too. It does a lot of damage. Hehehe. <laughs> 
<laughs> These patterns are a little erratic. You have to destroy its turrets, I guess. Uh, and then the eyeball. I wonder how long it would take if I just sat towards the back with Bucky and just sniped everything. skip through this stuff. You can make the text scroll fast, but start doesn't do anything. Oh joy, do I get to save the crew again? Yeah, I was noticing that. Yeah, it was it was much more chill when the dish was still on its head. Oh no, we still Oh, we got a couple crew. Okay. not make that. Always something now, isn't it? Okay, that is uh his jetpack's not very good unless it's like maxed out. Made the same mistake again. Go figure. No, oh, you're still alive. Okay.
Non-linear elements now. I had a feeling that was going to happen. This is getting a little tedious. indication of like whether they're going to fall or not so it's complete trial and error this is faster One thing I could do is maybe do this. Yeah, maybe it's not so useful af useless after all. few iframes. This is like a good strategy or not. All right, 
right? Okay. That's nice. You can at least see where those ones are. Jeez. Blinky ones operate differently than I thought. Loops. Huh. It's weird. Just loop around. Uh, it's intense. It's a lot to take in all at once. Ha <laughs> 
It's always something. Zach, yes, I am still at it. Sort of. See, I don't trust that at all. <laughs> You're not a fan of disappearing blocks, Leo. <laughs> what? It just looped me around. Um... I'm trying to figure out what I did wrong. Actually, just shoot them. For some reason, I thought I had to dodge or something. Yeah, I wasn't able to shoot the rocks, Adrian, with, uh, with Bucky. I'm not sure if he, either of the other characters can do it.
Uh, Pearl Jammer, I don't know if you've played it, but there's the, uh, semi-modern version back during the, uh, the PS2 era. It was kind of cool. I liked it. Yeah, it's really cheap, Pearl Jammer. It's a pretty cool game. You can probably get it for like five bucks. Five to seven bucks. It's still a really common game. What shall we do? We shall go home because this is not good. This is painful. It's probably like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles tune. If anyone uh, knows, let me know how far I am to, into the game. How many more levels do we have? I assume it's still a lot. This is near the end? Like, what is near the end? Do we have five more levels to go, or is this like the final stage or something? Because <laughs> I kind of want to play something else, but if we're really close to the end, I kind of want to also continue. Three more levels? Okay, I'm done then. <laughs> Next time I try again, I'll just uh, I'll use a password to get back here. Um, and actually, you know, I have even better solution. There we go. I just saved my state, so I can just try it again later on. <laughs> have I streamed Jurassic Park for Super Nintendo? I have not. It's, it's uh, kind of a weird game for me. All right. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it was cool trying that. I uh, That's the farthest I've ever gotten in that game. There's still a good bit left. Yeah, 70% through the game. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, messing around with this one a little bit on Twitch a few weeks back. It seems kind of cool, actually. I have not streamed it here before. Yeah, this is Codename Viper. It seems it's a lot like Rolling Gunner and uh, Shinobi. Let's put it on normal. Guns, it looks like I can jump low and high. And go inside these doors. Yeah, like it's a shameless uh, ripoff of <laughs> Rolling Gunner and Shinobi. But it seems pretty solid. Hey, baby. And I'm dead. Ow, man. If they land right on top of you, you, uh... Okay, yeah, this is, uh, this is challenging, too. So that was ammo. actually shoot. Okay, I see. It's a shame they don't refill your health.
I don't know if I've hit a checkpoint. Ammo? <laughs> I think this is the last game you needed a palate cleanser after Bucky O'Hare. Yeah, not that this is really helping. This is also a challenging game. But it's different, you know? And I definitely wanted to show it off. Seems like a fairly common game on the system. Wow, I can't duck that? That's gonna pull- I bet you it's gonna put me all the way back. Oh no! Look at that! Checkpoint! Oops, I was looking at chat. <laughs> like a dummy. But it does look like limited continues, unfortunately. Crestline has made it back. Welcome back, Crestline. I have played Predator. Yeah, I've not gotten very far in that. It's kind of a confusing game, too. Uh, CRT. That's a tough first level. Granted, we did raise the difficulty. I guarantee you this game was intended to be played on easy to start. Because that's the default difficulty in this. I jumped right into that bullet. You have limited ammo, so you have to be careful about, you know, when you shoot. Thank you. 
similar gimmick as the stage one. You get about halfway through and then guys start appearing out of objects. And the first level was the background. Okay, apparently I got an extra life. Oh jeez. Yeah, it's a cool game, Pearl Jammer. I I'm liking it. It's definitely a, definitely a challenge, that's for sure. There, we got white ones. Twenty thousand points is an extra life. Okay, yeah, I didn't notice that. Cool. Ow. Ammo. Okay, that does block your bullets. They kill you instantly. Lot of doors though. A lot of trial and error. And bullets kill you instantly, too. been playing uh, eight and a half hours
<laughs> Alright, so that's level two. I feel like the game would be pretty manageable once you've really figured out the levels. So far, anyway. Shinobi. Oh, our daylight here was done like an hour and a half into my stream. I think it's dark at like 5 p.m. now. Ugh. I don't know if there's a way to turn around without standing back up. Let's see. Yeah, you have to stand back up to turn around. it again. I meant to duck and I stood back up way too fast. So trying to figure out like what enemies take two hits, what enemies take one hit. And they keep introducing new enemies on every level, so like, I don't have any, any of that figured out yet. machine gun. I say that's why I'm shooting faster. Health extend. Oh. Okay, it looks like bullets take two hearts or two blocks of health. Problem is, I've only ever had two blocks of health. Bomb obtained. Couldn't turn around. Looks like my health bar was extended permanently, though. That's good. life though. Might be able to get an extra life with points.
<laughs> God damn it. <laughs> That's game. Never mind. Oh, that sucks. Easy starts you off with four hit points. Yeah, that... I, I feel like the game was intended to be played on easy, not normal. Because again, like, you know... You only start with two blocks of health on normal. So bullets kill you in one hit for the first two levels. Unless you get, uh, like, a heart. But it seems like power-ups are just dropped randomly in these doors. There doesn't seem to be any consistency. Wait. I did pick easy, right? Um... Start. Yeah, I picked easy and it only gave me two. Let's see. Yeah, it is a lot like Rolling Thunder, absolutely. Yeah, no, I still only have two blocks of health. What the hell? I want my money back, game. Did? Are you sure? I, I definitely did not. That's why I reset the game. I just did it again and I still only have two. Unless uh, that's like... Uh, easy gives you more health in other regions of the game. Like, I don't know if this was released outside the United States. Maybe there's a Japanese version. Maybe there's a European version. Yeah, you are right. The enemies are definitely a lot slower. Well, that was a fast jump. <laughs> I guess that's just a normal jump for enemies. Um... I'm not sure. There might have been. Okay, yeah, they're shooting at me, which is... Oh, come on. Seriously, dude. The platforming in this game is a little weird. Like, it's it's not like Mega Man where you can sit halfway off the platform. Like, look at that. You're like a quarter of the way into the platform when you can fall. So that's, that's tripping me up, too. It means I have to jump earlier. I guess... Oh! <laughs> I think the bomb's required to beat the level. I think you have to find the guy with the bomb. I was trying to figure out how to use the bomb, and I couldn't use it, so... So it's like you pretty much do have to go into all the doors. Unless the guy with the bomb is always in the same door. I'm gonna have to read up on this game. Yeah, you have to use the bomb. Okay. 
All right, well, I'm not gonna play through that again. Uh, that was a good little session with the game. I mean, it's cool to show it off. It's another one I want to put more time into. For sure. I don't know. I'm, I'm almost thinking maybe I should, uh, maybe I should get out of here. Let's see. Let me scroll through things one more time. This is what I'm thinking of. Uh, yeah, Leo, I think I'm done for streaming. If Whenever I finish here tonight on YouTube, I'm not going to stream anymore tonight. But this is a, kind of a janky game, but kind of fun if I remember correctly. I, I tried learning it a couple years ago to do a Let's Play and I never went through with it. I think this was an arcade game. This might even be related to uh, Midnight Resistance. Yeah, I think Midnight Resistance might even be like the sequel to this game. <laughs> Yeah, top guy running gun. It's a little laggy though compared to some of the other games you've played. Like both the frame rate is low, but also the controls are unresponsive. Oh shit, I just died. That was bad. I can open those chests without keys. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know the patterns for any of these enemies, so I'm just dying like crazy. out. Yeah, it's a really straightforward game.
Ah, died again. I don't remember how many continues you get. You get. I'm pretty sure it's not infinite. His leg, uh, leg movement is so derpy as well. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so you're also trying to assemble this weapon. I guess it's the heavy barrel. Which is, uh, I don't know what the game's name is. Yeah, bottom right, you assemble it, and it's this weapon that just, uh, like, annihilates everything. It only lasts for, like, a few moments. Flamethrower is really good, though. Oh, are you serious? It still shot out a projectile after I blew it up. My key is just slightly off screen. Ugh. Yeah, I'm just running around with my pea shooter the whole time because I keep dying the second I get a decent weapon. Grenades don't seem to be all that useful. Wait, what the hell? Uh, okay. Why is my grenade now a forward projectile? Yeah, I obviously don't know this game very well. <laughs> Although I never claim to, but still. I don't know why. Maybe it's just one of the, uh, the treasure chest boxes I got. Turn my grenades into this white cloud dust thing. It's cool, it does linger there, so it constantly does damage. Ah, dead. Tell what was happening. <laughs> Apparently, we were going up on the elevator. All right, no keys. Ah, jeez. Oh, cool. I was able to scroll the screen down. Ooh, another part of the heavy barrel. Okay, that definitely changed my grenade, I see.
Yeah, spread shot. Unfortunately, it looks like you've got limited ammo for each main gun. But I'd rather have this for a short bit than just be stuck with my pea shooter. That <laughs> voice symbol. Yeah, here we go. It's just it's a massive gun. It's on a timer. Just wasting it. <laughs> that was fast. This is a heavy barrel. By uh, Data East. <laughs> yeah, Sean, if there is a visual difference, I haven't figured it out yet. I've just been picking up whatever I can find, just because, you know, kind of underpowered. Or have been for most of this run. So the red guys actually do shoot at you. For some reason, I thought they would they were always just like running away from you. They look. Hmm, they look more like prisoners than enemies, but I guess they are actually enemies. Uh, Pearl Jammer? There's a lot. You can get, like, a, a list online. There's a lot of mappers for NES. Wow, still got killed by that. Big hitboxes. So, diamond shape? Uh, it's a grenade type. Another diamond shape. <laughs> I think they are! They're all the same, just like Sean pointed out. <laughs> How, like, the weapon draws just must be random or something then. It's really hard to dodge these things. I think that's game over. No, nope, not to continue. Oh, so Leo confirmed Heavy Barrel was rotary in the arcade. Okay. Yeah, Leo, I still want to get uh, the Data East Arcade Classics for Wii, but I know it's gone up in price a lot. I don't 
don't even remember if the emulation was even all that good, to, to be honest, but there's a lot of cool games on it. Yeah, Leo, I haven't played that collection in probably about 10 years now. You know, I had a copy of it when it was super cheap. Okay, so the light diamond shapes... Wait... <laughs> There's no consistency! Sometimes... Uh... Well, the light diamond shapes, two of them gave me uh, attachments for the heavy barrel. The other one gave me uh, red grenades. But I've gotten red grenades on the, the red diamond shapes too. I wonder if the diamond shapes are all the same, they just change, uh, colors, depending on, like, you know, palette changes. It's the only thing I can think of. That's game over. Heavy burger! Man, I want a heavy burger right now. Unfortunately, all the burger places are closed. Uh, it's too late. Alright guys, we managed the nine and almost a half hour mark. So I think that's a good long... Longer than anticipated stream. I wasn't expecting the stream for nine hours. Oh. <laughs> and of course Adam shows up. Now it's like, dude, now I have to play another game, Adam. Come on, man, really. You have to pop in now, dude. <laughs> oh, man. I gotta take my headphones off. They're hurting my ears now. It's that, it's that point of the night. But damn, Adam, you you stomped in. It's a little little too late, man. I've been streaming forever, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stop streaming. What a burger is still open in your city. Yeah, we don't have one of those around here. Just fashionably late. It's all good, man. I do appreciate you popping in. <laughs> oh man. Oh, yeah, thanks for hanging out everybody. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, fun stream. Tiring. I wasn't really the most alert. 
because this was just like a last minute, you know, just do, <laughs> stream because, uh, well, for one, I did feel like it, but two, it's like, oh, YouTube hates me because I haven't been streaming enough, so they're not <laughs> recommending my channel enough, so it was a way of uh, kind of padding my, my watch time numbers. I hate having to do that. But, um, I'm going to link to my uh, Karate Kid Let's Play. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it yet, I posted it uh, yesterday, yesterday morning, so please go check it out. Uh, feel free to leave a comment uh, if, you, if you watch it. But, uh, yeah, I had learned that one a few months back and was able to do a Let's Play of it, so... Um, but yeah, what, what do we play tonight? We played Heavy Barrel. I'm gonna work back through my list. Heavy Barrel, uh, Codename Viper, uh, Bucky O'Hare, Battletoads Double Dragon, uh, Mega Man 5, uh, my memory is terrible. <laughs> um, Silver Surfer, uh, Silkworm, Heavy Barrel. What do we miss, guys? I know I'm missing a bunch of things. Oh, Archon. We did Archon. That was cool. I definitely want to play more of that. See if I can beat a full round against the AI. Uh, versus Super Mario Brothers. Man, we actually played a lot of games. Godzilla. Yep, yep, yep. Crestline. Good memory. And Godzilla 2. Uh, Leo, there were zero racing games. I actually had thought about firing up uh, Indie Heat, but uh, but uh, yeah, I decided not to because it's you know we're nine and a half hours in, just about almost. So yeah, fun times. Hey, Leafo Three, you're welcome. Pearl Jammer says Zanak is another great NES shooter. Nah, Leo, you'll have to let it slip a lot of times, because, uh, you get a lot of racing games over on Twitch. <laughs> and old-school arcade games that I wouldn't normally play so regularly. Oh, man, yeah, that Bucky O'Hare was... that was a... that game was a pain in the ass. Wow. I can't imagine, like, once you see that game, because, I don't know, it's just hardcore memorization. It's a cool game, don't get me wrong, but it's, uh... Yeah, it's the most, like, precision platformer type of, uh, type of action I've played on an NES. Yeah, pretty crazy game. But, uh, alrighty folks, I guess that's gonna do it for me. Um... Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be streaming next week, but I've got two archives that are ready to go. So, this one, and then the Doom stream from last night. Uh, I'll have these published sometime next week for anybody curious. Check the archive then. Um... And, uh... Yeah. Uh, I did not post a video for patrons this week. I think I'm gonna save it for maybe... Well, I don't know. I did two streams this weekend. I might not do any direct uploads next week. I don't know. We'll see. Oh yeah, that's right. Next week is Thanksgiving. I traditionally try to stream on Thanksgiving, so... I don't know. Maybe you guys will see me back on Thanksgiving night for a stream. Uh, I'm not sure yet, though, so we, we will see. But uh, yeah, I want to give a big shout out to everybody who did Super Chats tonight. Uh, Flynn, Tag Arts Gaming, and then uh, Society of Sin, Cafe Man, and then uh, Sean. So thank you all for your monetary support tonight. It's much appreciated. Uh, goes to buying sandwiches before I... <laughs> or for my streams. That, that always helps. Um, it's the only way I can get through, through these. It's by having some food to consume halfway through. Uh, and prior to, actually, so, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, don't really have anything else to report, so, uh, yeah, maybe I'll see you on Thanksgiving. 
watch out for these archives, uh, you know, next week as well. And uh, check out the Karate Kid Let's Play if you haven't, because it's cool. I think it's good. And, uh, yeah. So, I guess until the next one, guys, um, take it easy. I'm so tired right now. <laughs>